Hey everybody, we got uh, some trades on our hands. I woke up to the, well, the Baji and Olenek news, and um, there could be more, certainly. A lot of trades happening around the NBA at this point in time. And my goodness, man, the Raptors got in on some of it. So here's what I want to know, first and foremost. What contract is Kelly Olenek signing back with the Raptors? Because that kind of dictates whether this is an okay deal. Like that establishes baseline. And then Abaji and what he turns into is kind of what creates the ceiling because Olenek is the better player right now. Olenek is a very, very good front court player in the NBA. Currently, what do we do? How does that look on the Raptors? Sure. But we have an understanding of the floor. Abaji, you know, we'll see what happens. I poked around on some defensive footage was digging around for it like a truffle pig. I like his footwork a lot. There's there's some things you look for, especially in like a point of attack guy who plays shooting guard like Abaji and who you want to see bring in, I guess, as far as... Hmm, if, if, if you want to make things easier on Scotty to some degree, if you want to make things easier on quickly in some, in some matchups, I think he makes a ton of sense. Now, Michael Grange reported that Abaji, you know, Masai knows his dad. They've known each other for some time. I don't know how much that stuff plays into it. I'm not sure about that. But I'll tell you what. Abaji, from what I've seen, is a stab stepper around screens. He's super athletic. He's been able to rack up a decent amount of blocks relative to his time played as a 6'5", 6'6", guy who can give you a little bit of backline pop. Um, he's very quick. Like he can slide pretty well, but he's not the best slider in the world. So that means that he's going to have to turn and chase and corral. I find that all of those things, the stab step around the screen, the sliding, the turn and chase, the combination of all those things, I think has made him into like a pretty can be impactful point of attack defender. And we have to see that, you know, outside of Utah. And we also have to be able to see that inside of Toronto. And Toronto lately has not been able to they they've not been able to get a lot of defensive returns out of players lately because the the framework has been so messy. But I tell you what, if Jakob is there, if Scotty's there, and if like Emmanuel quickly gets put into a little more off ball roles and Abaji is in some lineups, I think the Raptors could have some like five man lineups that could be pretty frisky defensively. And I, I like what Abaji brings on defense. Now, the swing skill, obviously, for Abaji that makes his role on the Raptors and in the NBA valid, basically, is, is the jumper. That was his bread and butter in college. He was a hell of a shooter, one of the best coming out of the draft. And I think he shot like 34% over a couple hundred three-point attempts at the NBA level. 34% is not good enough. I talked about this on last night's podcast, but... It's easy to kind of bet on Grady, who's now shooting 32%. Well done to Grady, slowly ticking up over the course of the se season. But it's Abaji played the full four years in college. He's 23 now. It's harder to like wait on that. But the thing is, too, it's only only year two. And this is a unique thing about, you know, hello, cap pervert time. Um, the, the, the call is coming from inside the house. But guys who you know it's about team control in a lot of sense so the fact that you know he's 23 it doesn't matter that much because you're not expecting a star outcome or anything like that you just want him to be a good player next to scotty you want him to and he's in team control next to scotty that's pretty good if he shoots the ball i think there's like a very easy route to the three and d stuff he doesn't have much of a dip he can make shots off of different footwork. I haven't seen a ton of motion shooting or anything like that, but that's kind of stuff he can work on. I'm interested to see how he grows going forward. And the joke I made yesterday, the Raptors needed a look smaxer, and he might be one of the most handsome men in all of the NBA. Truly, truly. Now, Kelly Olenek, no longer starting for the Jazz. He kind of popped off last season, as far as I was concerned. Um, for people who haven't paid attention to Jonathan Chen's written work covering the Team Canada over at Raptors Republic, he's the best at it. Like, Team Can Canada Basketball's number one analyst is at Raptors Republic. His name is Jonathan Chen. 
He has been paying so much attention to Kelly Olnick for years and kind of been like banging the drum of this guy is sneakily one of the best front court playmakers in the NBA. And he is, you know, he, he really is. And I think it's like 4.4 assists in 20 minutes. That's kind of absurd. I know that the Jazz, Will Hardy, runs like pretty high speed, high level offense, of course. And he's been able to fit in very well there. But there's something here from the Raptors point of view of like, for all the people who want Scotty to be able to score off of cuts and in two man actions and in high low stuff, for all the people who want Scotty to play in spacing, Kelly comes in. He's a guy over the past few hundred three point attempts he's taken. He's shooting like 40%. He can do it off of movement. He can come off of a pin down at his size. He, he can come off of a pin down, pump, put a dribble down. Scotty could make that that cut from the weak side corner and he could lob Scotty. Like there's there's a lot of unique stuff that they can stack on these Kelly Olinick lineups, and there's a lot of unique stuff that they'll be able to do. So that's kind of what we're looking at. I think that this trade makes the Raptors better in the short term. And I know, well, James Welch is asking what the deal was. Okay. <clears throat> well, Nesta says it right here. Otto, Kira, and the OKC pick, because it's the worst pick of the, the potential three or four that the Raptors have um, for Abaji and Kellyo. So that's the trade. I feel pretty okay with that deal. I know on its face, it's another first round pick going out for front court players. Um, and so that's three first round picks and a second, technically. Well, I guess you can remove the second because of the pick swap for Thad. Basically, three first round picks for Thaddeus Young, Yaka Pertle, and Kelly Olinick. Does that seem like prudent spending of draft capital? Not to some people. And I know some people probably don't like the idea of getting Kelly and then paying Kelly. Some people maybe would have liked the idea of team building from the point of view of like, okay, how do we team build? We should take on a bunch of picks. We should use the cap space to, you know, bring on bad contracts that come with picks. And that's how we should be building going forward. That's the thing. James Welch asks, will they trade Kelly? I think absolutely not. I think Kelly's going to be a Raptor and he's going to sign a contract. Now, of course, as I said at the start, the contract that Kelly signs provided he's not overpaid a ton or anything like that kind of establishes part of the floor for how this trade turns out. Kelly's going to be good. He's been a good big for a long time. And on top of that, Abaji is the one who dictates you know, the ceiling of this trade, I think, because he could turn into, I think, a very strong three and D player. And then you start working from like three and D, you know, in the, in the film I've seen, I've seen him make a few skip passes, but they're not like, he makes the skip pass pretty early. He's not making a deep skip, you know, as far as like the one pass away stuff, is he like really good at reading the floor? I didn't necessarily get that. The driving game, I didn't find to be super, super impactful. So that kind of stuff, I guess we'll see. Players can always get better, and Abaji could certainly get better. Is that stuff sitting in the tape right now? I didn't necessarily see that. But as far as like trading the OKC pick, really, it might it'll probably be between twenty seven and thirty as far as like this year's draft. I think Kelly Olynyk is probably worth about that. Otto, I don't think has any value. Like, as a person, so much value. Otto Porter Jr., we love you. But as far as, like, on the trade market and all that kind of stuff, I'm not sure he had anything, and I'm not sure what teams were looking, you know, I'm not sure what teams were looking for as far as that goes. And, yeah, that's kind of how that is. And Kier Lewis Jr., it's not like he, he was expected to make waves with the Raptors or anything like that. So, basically, I think from the Raptors' point of view, they're looking at, we get Kelly Olenek, who they think is an above-average big man, who pairs really well, ideally, like conceptually, with what Scotty Barnes wants to do. They got that down. Great. Um, Chris I says, any chance the Raps re-sign Olenek? I think so, definitely. Um, if they don't re-sign Olenek, I think that's a big problem. Because Olenek, I don't think, is just like a guy you bring in. I think Olenek is a player of, he matters. He's a good player. He's a player who it matters to keep on your team. Genuinely. Um, and, and Abaji, I think has, has upside there. So I think that this is not a bad trade from the Raptors point of view. I understand what it looks like trading another first round pick, but 
I was sitting across from Masai when he said it. He like he came out. I don't know if he lost his leverage because of saying it publicly, but at the press conference, he was saying that, hey, you know, we're probably not going to use all these picks. And then so I don't know if other GMs were like tapped in to the press conference saying, OK, we got him. We can use that in negotiations like you're not even going to use this pick. Give it to us. I'm not sure. But yeah, I don't think he was enthused about the idea of going like three or four deep in, in this draft, which they've gone three deep in a draft before. But that usually involves, you know, like an undrafted free agent or something like that. But yeah, um, that's kind of where we're sitting at. I come out on the side of the trade of saying, like, I think this is a good trade. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. I know that might be different than some people's expectations. I know some people are looking at like, does this match up the timeline? Does this do whatever? I think Kelly Olenek will help Scotty play cool basketball. I think that he will help Emmanuel quickly and RJ Barrett and Scotty all get better reps and play better basketball. And I think they will get better. And I think the opportunity cost for that, both in trading the pick. And in whatever they pay him, which they still have to, I think it's worth it to have that look. That's where I come out on this. Because again, Kelly Olenek is a, a good, like a high quality big man in the NBA, could fit into the rotation of like multiple contending teams, like a championship team he could play minutes on. You know, some of the defensive stuff can get a little bit wonky, but we're talking about a guy who plays 20 minutes a game, 56% from the field. 43% from three right now and 4.4 assists per game to 1.6 turnovers. 4.4 assists from the front court in 20 minutes? Pretty good. James Welch says Kelly is too old. I don't think it's as binary as just like having young guys and other young guys, you know? I I, I don't I don't think team building is that of course we can disagree, but um I don't think of team building as that binary. I think that there is room for Kelly Olynyk to succeed and help the Raptors as he, like, on one of the last contracts. I think that Kelly will help bring the guys along. And I think also Darko will be happy to play Kelly and move through a lot of his pet actions there. Um, yeah. E says, I like the trade, but I'm going to be a bit peeved if we don't move off the rest of the vets. Yeah, I think... Um, like Bruce Brown, we'll see what happens. I'm not exactly sure. Um, Akash Chopra says, wouldn't we have had space to sign Kelly in free agency? They may very well have. Um, but on top of that, who knows? And the Raptors might have their eyes set on something else in free agency. And they might be looking at Kelly's cap hold versus bird rights and stuff like that, right? So that or partial bird rights. So team building, I guess we'll see what's going on. James Welch says Masai may be trying to sell us on Canada angle. Um, I think that the Canada angle is definitely inherent. I think that the Canada angle is important to Kelly. And I think that, you know, more than anything, though, rather than him just being Canadian, I think that Kelly is like a good player. And the Raptors, it's not just like get young guys to build, you know, a winning team and all that kind of stuff. I think that Kelly, and I'll, this is the last time I'll say it, but I think that Kelly, his skill set, how he plays, is definitely going to elevate the reps that Barbecue gets. Barnes, Quickly, and Barrett. That's that's what I think is going to happen. And I like that decision. And of course, if they throw like the fattest possible bag at Kelly in free agency, then maybe I like it a little bit less. Love it for Kelly. Like, get the money. But... I think that there's a lot of stuff they can do with Kelly that will give guys reps where they see different defensive responses where that they learn, okay, this is what this looks like. Because if you play bad basketball, you get bad reps. Some of it is like, okay, we're getting reps. We're breaking down defenses. I'm working in like high pick and roll and stuff like that. But there is diminishing returns. You want to play good basketball. And Kelly will help the Raptors get really good offensive reps that I think will benefit the progression and development of guys like IQ, Scotty, and RJ. I, I like it. And I think like a first round pick is not the super, the between the 27th to 30th 
first round pick, I think um, I think that's a perfectly fine price to pay, let's say. James Welch says, as a Habs hockey fan, we hate the concept of trying to build a team based on nationality. We sucked for years having to trade for bad French players. Mm. I, I don't like I maybe it's because I I'm well aware of Kelly's game and I think that Kelly is good. But I think that the biggest motivation for this trade is the fact that Kelly is good, not that he's Canadian. Although my brother was a Habs fan and I never liked the Habs because they won too often. I guess, even though the last time they won was 2000 or 1993. Um, OG3 says, is Abaji the most attractive Raptor now? He's really handsome. That's why I said the, you know, the look max, the looks maxer. Um, ND says, give players training wheels to get better. LOL. Yeah, I think that it is really important for players to get winning basketball type reps. Like Larry Markinen is a better player because of time spent next to Kelly Olynyk. Now, would it have been better for the Jazz if Kelly Olenek was like 23 and providing that next to Laurie? Like, sure, but that just isn't the case exactly, right? Lee Zimmerman says, why did the Jazz do this trade? They had two years to check out this guard and are passing on him. Maybe they know something, and why give him up for a horrible pick in a horrible draft? Yeah, so two years, not, it's like a year and a half, I guess, maybe. Maybe that's cope on my end. Um I think the Jazz do this trade because Kelly is the most attractive portion of this trade, technically, and they wanted to get a pick back, and they saw this as the, the easiest way to do that. So that's kind of why they do it. And and obviously, like they they probably figure they have room to let guys grow, and they're ready to let guys take like a step or something like that. And that's yeah, that's how it's shaking up. I don't like James. I see your question, but I already answered that. And I still have to try to maintain like a, a linear sense of this podcast since more people actually listen to the audio version. So as far as that goes, I feel like I feel like that's not such a bad trade. I kind of like it. Cody Wiles says little wrinkle in the trade. Kelly can teach Jonte Porter a couple of different things, different players for sure, but have similar skill sets. Porter is sneakily a good passer like Kelly. O. yeah, Porter is a good passer. Um, he is unfortunately shooting like a wretched percentage from the floor, which hasn't been good. And he he doesn't have quite the touch or in-between game that, that Kelly has. But Kelly is like 10 years older. So, yeah, we'll see. I think the, the Jazz are going to have an earnest effort at building around Sexton and Markinen. And I think that Sexton plays better off of more traditional bigs than he does Kelly Olenek. And I think that they're also... Like with Keontae George emerging, not in an efficient role, but as a role where the the Jazz want to give him more possessions, Abaji is a guy who they can just leapfrog happily now. They also have like a ton of like a ton of guard depth on that team. So I think they're trading from a like a point of strength to kind of get like maybe they like somebody at the end of 2024 draft, you know? That's that's what I can say from the the Jazz's point of view. But outside of that, you know. The Jazz are a team I kind of have a blind spot on. It's really tough to it's really tough to find like a good media analyst out in Utah. And then also like I used to know a guy who was who did scouting for BYU, but then that just isn't a thing anymore. And so I don't have like any connects out in Utah whatsoever. So for, I can I can only kind of like look at cap sheets and look at you know, points per game and assists, assists per game and all that kind of stuff to to try and give my my opinion. Michael Burns says, I honestly did not realize Olenek was even still in the league. Michael, he's good. Olenek, he, Olenek is a good player. I don't like, I, I'm, I'm not doing cope. I'm not like only in on him because he's Canadian. He's one of the best playmaking like bigs in the NBA. And as far as like a bench big, he might be the best playmaker coming off the bench in the front court in the NBA. like, And he shoots the hell out of the basketball. Now, we'll see what happens with the defense. We'll see what the Raptors do to kind of like insulate him there. But that's where Abaji comes in, I think. And Abaji could meaningfully get meaningfully better from three. There's all that kind of stuff going on. Let me, um, let's, okay. I'll send, I'll send the little invite over to Makai. We're going to get him in on this. We're going to ask him what he thinks. 
And we're going to talk to Makai Bruce about what he thinks about this trade, etc. So let me message him. Okay. And he'll pop in here. So um, I guess Matthew Rosales says, uh, feels like a big upgrade over Thad at center. Yeah. And, and Thad has done his darndest for sure. That's like a, that's tried and true. And then on top of that, we're talking about, you know, I don't really know how the Raptors plan on like having their, their front court shake out, but I guess we'll see. All right. Um, Coco says, Samson, did you learn how to pronounce? Oh, okay. Just one sec. People that don't know my name and how to say it, uh, it's pronounced Ochai Abaji. That's the one. That was Ochai himself. So I, I went and looked that up. They had, when he's at Kansas, they had like all of the fans. It was, it was kind of like borderline racist. <laughs> you know how like there's kind of the thing where white people say names that aren't like Anglo, like Anglicized, and then it sounds ridiculous. And like they're like, oh, I can't say, you know, it's so crazy. Ha ha ha. But then they'll say some sort of like crazy Anglicized thing. It was like a video like that. But at the end of it, he says his name. And he's like, that's that's how you say the name. So that's kind of how it shakes out, right? That's what we're looking at. Um, Andre says 332 watching and only 30 likes. Come on, guys, support Samson. That's right. Support the the podcast. When you like this, it helps suggest it to other people. And that's kind of um, where we're sitting at with that. So it, it's free and it's an easy way to show support. So I guess that's kind of where we're sitting. But once again... We'll hit the we'll hit the track again for everybody who wants a baji. People that don't know my name and how to say it, uh, it's pronounced Ochai Abaji. There we go, Ochai Abaji. ND says Ochai is another Nigerian. Masai keeps bringing bringing in my people. Yeah, that was like when I was at the press conference and Masai, you know, was asked about Pascal, and he's asked about some of the guys. Like he was obviously. That was when he shed tears at the at the press conference when he was talking about winning championships with other African men, other African people, what that meant. And it's also largely why he, he was so earnest in saying, like, Pascal's success is my success. And there's it was like at the live podcast, right? Cody Wiles is in chat. He's from Saskatchewan. He writes for Raptors Republic. Lindsay Dunn, who's the. She works for the BBC and the NBA and City News and the Raptors 905. And she when she was on the panel and she was talking about how she's like, oh, well, I'm from Saskatchewan and so is Samson out there and everything like that. It's like there's something about being from the same place as somebody. Now, of course, Africa is not a monolith and Saskatchewan is a lot smaller. And there's probably, you know, a problem with viewing Africa as a monolith the world over without looking at like how diverse it is and all that kind of stuff. However, as far as just like getting guys to the NBA from Africa, having them win and make money and play at the highest level, that obviously means a lot to Masai. Now, would I say that that's like meaningful to getting Ochai on the team? No, I'd, I'd say it's done on, you know, what he brings as a player. And what I talked about, you know, in the first like two or three minutes or maybe five minutes was that. We're looking at a guy who can help sort out some of the point of attack stuff. And I and I think he's extremely athletic. I like his footwork. And when a guy is extremely athletic and plays really hard and has good footwork on defense, then there's usually a route to some pretty good impact, especially as far as like point of attack and screen navigation stuff goes. I think that Abaji can provide some real stuff there. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what it is. Cody Wiles says not as many good basketball players from Saskatchewan. Shout out to Trey Lyles, though. Yeah, born in Saskatoon, but really didn't live there at all. Fun fact, because this is what I said about how I know. Well, I don't know Kelly. I've met Kelly at Gonzaga, but he won't remember me. So when I talk to Kelly when he's in Toronto, I'm going to say, oh, you know, I went to Gonzaga. I played some some basketball there, not as a Zag, not as a Bulldog for the listeners. But and he'll be like, oh, cool. But he won't remember me. And, but I also worked with his sister, Maya, at Foot Locker and played some basketball with her. She played for the university team in Saskatchewan. But Trey Lyle's dad, I'm pretty sure, worked at Foot Locker when Trey Lyle's was born in Saskatoon. The only, the only NBA player from Saskatchewan. And he's not actually from Saskatchewan, just born there. So, like, I think he grew up in the States for however long. 
Um, yeah, Trey. Trey is going to come on. That's what I think. Trey and Kai are both going to come on, and we're going to talk about all this. Been waiting around on these fellas. I try and keep it linear. Otherwise, I feel like a Twitch streamer. And I feel like if, ooh, Ryan Holowati says Michael Linklater is legit, never made the league, though. Yes, I've played with Michael before. And Michael, you know, he's older now, obviously. He was a huge part of Canada's three-on-three team. And he was awesome. And I, I know Michael. And Michael is, like, just a great man. And, of course, he's, like, he's a hell of a, hell of a basketball player. He can shoot the hell out of the basketball. Um, Michael's great. Good shout out, Ryan. Um, Trey and Kai are both going to come on. Um, Phoenix Plays E says, did you talk about Hayward to OKC? We've been firmly on the Raptors front at this point in time. Firmly. And so that's that's where we've been keeping it at. Um, but I'll extend. One, we'll, get, we'll get Trey and Kai in here, and they're both going to be interested in having discussions, I think, about the NBA at large. Um, Nigel says, hey, Samson, what's your take on Ochai shooting? Seems like a poor man's OG in terms of shot selection and lack of shot creation, just based off stats, or am I totally off? Um, I think that, like, sure, if you want to, like, if OG is, like, the facsimile, that's that's fine to think about in that term. I, I do think that you're you're hitting on some correct things around his game. I think that, like, I don't know about shot selection as far as like OG, I guess it, when you're limited as a creator, it does, of course, you know, impact the types of shots you're going to be able to take and gives you a more reserved shot chart, I suppose. He's certainly not the finisher that OG is, and he doesn't have the size that OG has, of course. Um, but I think that Ochai is somebody who can hit, catch and shoot threes, has like a very quick release, can hit off of different footwork, but it gets complicated when he starts getting into like a little bit more motion. We're looking for a little bit more consistency there. I think that he has a higher ceiling as a shooter than OG does. And I know that sounds maybe a little crazy considering he is 23, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of where we're sitting at. Koki says, would you feel good about this trade if they don't end up trading Bruce? It would be a little bit odd if they don't trade Bruce, which could also maybe... I guess, like explain if they don't trade Bruce and they want to keep Bruce, then it would make sense that it would make sense that they trade for Kelly instead of signing him in free agency because Bruce, they'd have to guarantee his like what, $22 million team option and that kind of stuff. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I think... I think that he probably like he he will end up getting traded. That's my read. Makai Bruce, the young bull. What's going on? What's good, man? What's going on? Uh, just talking about some trades. Um, for the people, what do you think about the Ochai Kelly O trade? Um, like immediately. My immediate reaction was a little bit of a a panic because I'm like, oh wow, they they threw a first in there, but then mm. I remembered like, oh. Bruce Brown probably getting dealt. So they're probably like, I think it's going to be the OKC pick. I think it's the least favorable one. Yep. So that's probably going to be like a late first, like 28, 29, around there. But if they trade Bruce Brown and they, you know, get that first right back, then the deal looks a lot better. And so Arnold just really needed some rotation guys. Like Oche, what, how do you say his name? Oche, Ochai? O Oche Abaji. Yeah, or Oche Abaji. Ochai, Ochai Abaji. Oh, Ochai, yeah. He... You know, it's kind of having a rough time this season, I think, just from me, just, you know, a quick glance at his stats. But Kelly O is a great rotation guy, and they really needed him in the front court because, you know, playing Jonte, playing Thaddeus. Oh, what's good, Trey? Uh, Trey, I'm not the working man. <laughs> working for the man. But yeah, I Jeez, think it's a good deal. Your mic sounds cracked, dude. Are these I'm the using, AirPods? I'm using AirPods. They're not home. Did you get them from Wish or what, dog? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Go laptop. Well, no, no, just that's that's totally fine. Um, but however, um, Coco asked. I just want to answer this since I actually do have information on this. Samson, I know you said we are purely Raptors focused, but did you see the Pacers traded Buddy? I did, and this was actually Kai and Trey can both. This is a personal and private conversation I had with S where S was saying they're not, like, that's Tyrese's good friend. They're not going to trade Buddy. 
And I was like, we'll see. Just I've been hearing some stuff. And Buddy did end up getting traded. And basically, to give the background on that, Buddy and the Pacers were really far apart on what his next contract looks like. And I think that they were trying to take as much time to get close to the same number. And I still think they were like per year, like over 10 million apart. So they didn't expect to be able to re sign Buddy at all. That's right, Trey. Crazy. They didn't expect to be able to re sign Buddy at all. And so Buddy goes out the door. But also, um, OG3 says trading Buddy should be good news for our Pacers pick. This is where maybe Trey and I will disagree. But Andrew Nemhard has been very, very good lately. He makes a ton of sense for how the Pacers want to play. The Pacers see with Pascal as a quiet quitter on the Raptors defense and has been much better since joining the Pacers. I think they see a more viable route to good defense or passable defense. Um, you know, cue the sound board of Rick Carlisle talking about pretty girls and getting bored with defense. But the Pacers, I think, are expecting to play Nemhard a lot of those buddy minutes, and they're tr- going to try not to worry about buddy tanking some defensive stuff. For all the, all the like, explosive offensive value that he provides, yeah. And then... Coco asks, okay, so we couldn't have gotten him for Pascal. I wonder if they could have, but the Raptors, the same way the Pacers will have talked, or I don't know what's legal for teams to do, but would have talked or whatever the hell about Pascal's extension, the Raptors would have broached that with Buddy and would have been like, hey, what are you trying to get as a contract just so we know if we trade for you? Um, And Buddy would have said, I'm looking for like, 30 33 million dollars a year and the raptors would be like god damn like we're not so yeah that's kind of um that's kind yeah. of where it's at og3 uh, says ugh nemhard should have been a raptor hey brother me and you both Whew. okay trey uh thoughts on the afternoon of trade so far okay i'll start start with your piece of stuff i think like, can i just say can you can you read can you pull up Google and read the Winston Churchill World War One speech? <laughs> <laughs> I come to you now. <laughs> the the fact that they traded Buddy Heel to the Philadelphia 76ers, a team that they um, obviously are competing with in the standings, is a bit tough. But um. I personally feel like I, I get the defensive upside with like Nemhard and, and Pascal. It's just that me personally, I feel like the combination of Buddy Heald and Tyrese Halliburton makes them so explosive. And the gravity that they created was the reason why their offense was so historic. You've now put in a situation where they're, they, the way that they play will change to some degree because teams will be able to pinch in much harder on, on Pascal. And you probably feel a bit more comfortable throwing a hedge at, at Tyrese, whereas the first 25 games of the season, every time you threw a hedge at, at Tyrese, it was a buddy three and it was going in, which which is really, really tough. But like, I get obviously having to like make something of the obviously, the obviously like the trade. But um, so going to the, to the Raptors, go ahead. I was going to say, Spitz says, are we all going to be watching the Pacers and Knicks these playoffs asking for a friend? So Trey and I have both I don't we probably watched the same amount of Pacers games yeah. since then. Trey fervently cheering on losses for them, which is like from a Raptors fan point of view, could be the difference of like four or five draft spots, depending on if yeah. they ascend or descend. That's what you're supposed to do. Um for myself, I might actually do some Pacers playoff coverage with Caitlin Cooper because I don't expect the Raptors to be in there. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, we're, we're all paying attention. And of course, like from the Raptors' perspective, the worse the Pacers do, I mean, the better that pick is. And that's that's kind of what it is. And, and Coco says, I actually have loved watching the Knicks lately. It's humbling. The Knicks play awesome basketball. Like smash mouth, defense first. They just let their stars boogie and woogie on offense. And then they get after it on the defensive end. Um, you're from New York, Kai. Bacon, egg, and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you gotten anything like the Aki way? Oh, no, no, you, I have not gotten anything the Aki way. 
Have you gotten anything the Aki way? This <laughs> guy. <laughs> um, Kai, back to your thoughts. Uh, you can talk about the Raptors trade if you want, but what has surprised you most from, if it is a Raptors trade, fine, but what has surprised you most about the NBA trade deadline so far? What surprised me the most, honestly, when the Knicks news first dropped, my heart kind of sank a little bit because it said, it said Burks for Quentin Grimes in two seconds. So I'm thinking like, oh man, like Leon Rose is cooked, like it's over. <laughs> what happened to this guy? And then for some reason they decided to like break it in like separate tweets Wolves did. And then I saw that it was for Boyan and all that. So that was the most shocking part because why would they break up the news like that? That was pretty weird. But an underrated move, I think, is Gordon Hayward's OKC. I feel like that's a huge deal. And I feel like if he can stay healthy, he can definitely provide the kind of secondary creation they need, provide the floor spacing for um for Shea and J Dub and all those guys. Don't say I look like him, please. And he can just provide <laughs> a lot of that, you know, talent. There, there's almost 400 people in chat who are saying to themselves right now, oh, he does look like J-Dub, like 100%. Um, sure. Spitz says they're wildling number one, by the way, if that means anything. Wildling number one, a staunch and like tried and true reader and commenter at Raptors Republic for just years and years and years. Thank you for your patronage and reading, just as like I, I recognize that name, of course. Kira Doyle says Schroeder just traded for Dinwiddie. I told you guys. I said it at the live pod. I told you Schroeder could get traded. Finally. Finally. I told y'all. Will Lou, me and him, we we met in the middle of the stage, and I said, why not? And he said, why? And I said, Dennis could get traded. Coco says you called it. Yes, let's run with that. I predicted this package as well, surely. There's no recording of it, but I did get on stage and say that Spencer didn't witty for Dennis Schroeder. These are all jokes, please. Nobody yeah, take them seriously. Think? Okay, I have to see the Raptors are trading Dennis Shooter to the Nets for Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, okay, wait. I'll let Trey go first because you were slapping. If you had a hat on your head, you would have thrown it off. I, I like Dinwiddie. He's he's someone that offers a lot of versatility. He still gets the rim in, in ways that Dennis does as well. And much less volatile in terms of like the way that he organizes the offense. So I personally, like he throughout his career has been like an average to below average catch and shoot shooter, but offers more versatility than what Dennis Dennis can provide. And he's a, a big contract that they can they can get off of. So it makes sense in, in both ways, whether they keep him or not. So I, I think it's good. I don't know the pick conversation though. So or if so there is even any. He's expiring, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that is kind of funny because Nets Daily the other day was talking about they had tweeted something and, and Spence responded to them. They're talking about a buyout, and he's like, They are not, they are not going to buy me out. And obviously, that's kind of um that's kind of where it's at. James Sorensen says he's an undra- um an unrestricted free agent. Did Dennis just sour the whole org and they just wanted him out? You guys, it doesn't have to be that. I like. I think like these guys get along. What? Why does everyone think everyone's mad and like angry and all everything all the time? Um, I think that the Raptors probably just saw an avenue to probably more reps for their guards, probably an avenue for like more money in the off season, and that was the motivation. And they can actually get their mid level exception back, and they'll have the full non taxpayer mid level exception. That's like they're stacking the deck for the future. Um, and like Dennis was not a high, like he was a low risk signing when he got signed, like when he was on the MLE. It's not a super big deal to trade a guy on the MLE. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with Spence. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets like redirected, to be quite honest with you. So, yeah, um, as Keir Doyle mentions, like, wouldn't be surprised if that is also included in this because the money doesn't work otherwise. That's that's kind of where I'm coming from. Dennis, Darko no longer has Dennis to lean on. The Raptors now have a backcourt of Dinwiddie, who may or may not be there. Dinwiddie, who we'll see what happens. But in my mind, as Jordan says here, y'all got Jalen Williams on the show. That's correct. <clears throat> 
<laughs> anyway, Abaji, Dick, Wara, Quickly, RJ. I think that makes sense. Leaning into some of the youth stuff, leaning, trying to get like, and, and Gary, of course. So we'll see what's happening with that. And um, ND says at least the double guard lineup has more size as well, but maybe a little bit less punch at the point of attack. So I guess we'll see. Kai traded from you know, that's in that's in your vicinity, the Brooklyn Nets. What do you what are your thoughts? I mean, I really like it for Brooklyn. You know, after watching Dennis all season long, I think they could definitely have used a kind of organizer on offense because, you know, trying to rely on Ben Simmons, who's in and out, and Mikhail Bridges to be kind of your lead playmakers, it's not really the best thing. So I think Dennis is a good table setter for them. And, you know, just like you said, for Toronto, getting Spencer Dinwiddie back, who may or may not stay, I think it's a good look for them to be, you know, leaning onto the young guys a lot more and really kind of seeing, you know, what they have there. So I really like it for both sides, but I definitely like it for Brooklyn a lot more. Nesta in chat says, Scotty's body language after Dennis took a few shots last game was concerning me. Not anymore, I guess. I don't get this because he only took nine shots. Like, I, 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 why would that be such a big deal? Like, a guy is like, what, plus nine? He scores 16 points on nine shots. Like, I understand Dennis wasn't a perfect guard, but he's a mid-level exception guard. He's not supposed to save the team or sink it. He didn't do either. And, you know, Memento AO says nine too many, LMAO, JK. Yeah. If, like, I, I'm not, look, I don't do body language for what it's worth. I don't do body language. That's like, the, I'm I'm certainly in my position, not supposed to do body language. So I don't know what Scotty's reacting to. Oh, the package came out. They got Dennis Smith Jr. And they traded Thad. Point of attack in yeah, our it's city. Pretty good. It's pretty good. I was size Dennis Smith. So, so for the people who are wondering, you know, you know, somebody was like earlier in the podcast, they said, I didn't even know Kelly Olenek was still in the league. I wouldn't blame some people for not really knowing if Dennis was in the league, but I'm here to tell you for the, for the blog boys, the Zach Lowe compadres, all that kind of stuff. Dennis Smith jr. Is considered one of the premier point of attack defenders in the NBA. One of the best guard defenders in the NBA for the people who are thinking like, Ooh, how do we get quickly kind of off ball in that off ball role? He succeeded in so often as a defender. Here Doyle says Woj deleted the tweet. Maybe not. Oh, good lord. Yeah. These newsmakers, man. Oh, he I did. wish he deleted it. <laughs> oh, clarify. Thad Young is coming to the Nets in the trade with Dennis Shooter. Oh, that's what he was clarifying. Okay, so um all full steam ahead, as per usual, I suppose. Anyway, the people will want to see the Raptors improve their point of attack defense and the fact that Yaka Pertle is a decent defensive center. The fact that Scotty Barnes has popped off is like a great backline sweeper who has a ton of versatility and like some of the point of attack stuff can be waning but can be effective at times. That's kind of, that's where we're sitting at, right? So those things are good, in my opinion. I like this move. And Thad Young, finally, we get it. The Raptors signed him to a deal that they could guarantee it from 1 million to 8 million because they were like, well, if we need trade ballast, you're going to make like eight times more money. And Thad got to make eight times more money, got the bag, goes to Brooklyn and big shout out to Thad, who was a big part of, you know, the team and like trying to establish culture and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. ND says IQ, DSJ, Ochai. Scotty Yak, that's a real defensive five man lineup. It certainly is. Yeah, so, better. yeah. And Nameless says they want to have money to pay IQ and Scotty. Well, they can pay both those guys regardless. Like, IQ is a restricted free agent. They can pay him whatever they want. They have his full bird rights. And Scotty, of course, is on a rookie scale contract and can sign a max extension, which he will sign because the Raptors will offer that. And if the Raptors didn't offer him a max extension the very second it was available, they would be going nuts. Whoa, just saying no Dennis Smith Jr. Are you cracked? Wow. Oh. Got our hopes up. <sighs> Is this on TV or did he tweet this out? I, I got to say, I feel like such a jackass. Just like refreshing Woj's thing to read out. I feel like such a jackass. Media is cooked, man. Um, Yeah. Not this media, man. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay, we're waiting on news. It says it's on X. Clarify. Thad Young is coming to the Nets with Dennis Shooter. Sources said. Okay, the Raptors are trading Dennis Shooter to the Nets for Spencer Dinwiddie. Yes. I don't see any mention of Dennis Smith Jr. And I haven't seen a clarification from Woj. Maybe it's from Shams. I don't know. I would, don't feel like they would be getting the same thing. What do you guys think about it if Dennis Smith Jr. is not on the Raptors? Oh, not, not as much, but obviously, like, they're saving a bunch a bunch of cap room, and it opens the door for, for Grady and Oche to play a, a bunch of minutes. Obviously, this is a little bit of cope, but um, I, I think it still makes sense because, like, Dennis was a, a player, like, although he was really good and was tenable for the lineups that they did have, he, in, in the way that Darko wants to play with constant movement and, and motion, I think you need a better organizer and someone that can play off ball a bit better. So I think, it, it like, on its head, it still makes sense. Okay. Um, Blake has the tweet, actually. So, Schroeder and Thad for Dinwiddie and Dennis Smith Jr. So, wraps out of Dennis's $13 million for next year without taking any 24 25 money back. I'm not going to cast doubt on Blake. I'm going to champion him as a newsbreaker. So I'm going to finally settle on Dennis Smith Jr. as a Raptor. I like that. Dennis to Brooklyn, Thad to Brooklyn, Dinwiddie and Smith Jr. I think Dinwiddie probably doesn't stay with the Raptors, um, at least into next season. I don't think they re-sign him. I wonder if he gets flipped somewhere else during this trade deadline. But I think Dennis Smith Jr. is a guy who makes sense to stay with the Raptors. Yeah. I like I like that. No, so, it makes perfect sense. It like yeah. it it goes to show that they've kind of got a gauge on an IQ and have given him a way to one play off the ball a bit more and two like support him defensively. So I think the the Raptors and even like in transition, he's gonna be great with Scotty. So I think it makes a lot of sense. And it's another guy that both him and Kelly guys that you want to resign heading into next season. And you're filling out your roster for 25 prior to heading into free agency. I, and honestly, this is kind of what we're looking at. We, we want a team that can play more defense. We want a team that can lean into, you know, something that fits Scotty and Jakob, the two most important defensive players on the roster, better. And you want to start developing those habits that eventually help build culture. And Thomas Carnero says, even DSJ is confused if you go to his ex account. This stuff, again, such a jackass. I like, it used to be, we used to be a society. You used to go down to do the press conference. You'd walk in there. They'd be like, we made a trade. You'd be like, what are the details we've got? We got all the details. Now we're just scrounging around like truffle pigs on the internet, trying to figure everything out. Yeah, Good Lord. Around, man. Um, I probably sound like an old guy. You know, the chat was saying I'm Zoomer coded the other day. Probably it doesn't seem that way anymore. Um, okay. This is throwing me off. I don't know what trade I'm reacting to at this point in time. I'm going to assume it's what Blake said. I think that Dennis Smith well. Jr. S, I think that so. S reposted DSJ. Is S breaking news? What's the know. deal? This is three men reading Twitter. Welcome to the yeah, podcast. No, what a podcast this is. Twitter. Dennis Smith Jr. just yeah. posted. Uh, yeah, Dennis Smith Jr. doesn't know where he's going. So, <laughs> yeah. How are we supposed to know where he's going? Blake recanted. This is so stupid, man. Oh, oh, this is so stupid. Okay, let's go figure it out. Blake recants. He says, okay, no Dennis Smith. Woj misfired. What the hell, man? What is wrong with you people? Not Blake. They really course. messed Dear with friend. us today, man. Dear friend. Oh, oh, so Blake didn't have a source. He was aggregating Woj. Okay. And with additional info saying, like, they're freeing up money. Okay. I feel not as happy about this if Dennis Smith Jr. isn't coming back because yeah, I really actually a lot. I like Dennis Smith Jr. a lot. I think he would have all yeah. Anyway, Nesta, we're gonna before these things so, sort it out. I can hardly speak at this point in time. Nesta says, Trey, how does all this movement make you feel about team keep? We're gonna keep the conversation here until we know what the hell happened in that trade. Trey, <laughs> okay. I think for me, it largely depends on what happens with, with Bruce Brown. If they are able to secure another 
uh, first, depending whether it's 2025 or 2024. I would probably, if they secure a 2024 pick, I'd probably be more inclined to team convey, but assuming that doesn't happen, um, they're obviously going to be clearly worse, especially if you redirect Dinwiddie. So it, it makes a lot of sense. I don't think they're going to be able to catch catch the Blazers, but you ideally look into the season, like Grady's going to now play 20, 25 minutes a night. You're, he's showing positive progression. And whether that leads to wins or losses, I still think that's like the direction they should be going towards. Okay. I still love that you say like catch the Blazers because it's like <laughs> it's the complete inverse of how things are typically um, supposed to work. Okay. So it seems like Dennis Smith Jr. is not coming back. So let's reevaluate. Dinwiddie for Thad and Dennis. I don't think Dinwiddie is meaningfully better than Dennis. I think they're. I think Dinwiddie is probably better than Dennis. Just looking at it as far as how I view both their games, not super meaningfully so. And Dennis would have had one more year on thirteen million. I don't know what Dinwiddie's plans are for the off season, but I can't imagine he starts the two thousand twenty four season as a Raptor. There's a chance he gets moved over the rest of this trade deadline. Based on my sources, there's and of course you could always end up with a buyout or something like that. Good lord! So kind of like meh. I think that the yeah. Kelly Olynyk and um, Abaji trade is like interesting, and there's stuff to talk about from that point of view. But yeah, as far as like this trade, that's not um, that's not super exciting. Douglas it, Ngira or Nira can correct me which it is in the comments, please. Coaching and motivation says, Ochai's game reminds me of Jimmy Butler. I see big potential in him. That's interesting. Hmm. Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. I guess Jimmy is a guy who came out of college after a few years. Like, and he had a crazy story getting to college, like getting into Marquette. He had to use the McDonald's fax machine, right? Um, and he only got there because another teammate he had had like a tryout there and he just like tagged along and then he had, you know, the dog in him, etc. And then he developed his offensive game really, really late. And like his development as an offensive player was insane. Being a guy who works the middle of the court is, you know, very comfortable with contact, all that kind of stuff. I got to say, Ochai, I don't really see the comparison between he and Jimmy, but also Jimmy was such a late bloomer that you could definitely make the case that like if Jimmy's a comp, you just have to see a guy at like 26 or 27. So yeah. And then Van Hoot 2234 says Ochai reminds me of Danny Green. And Danny Green is definitely not Jimmy Butler. So we have different ends of the spectrum. You have you have Jimmy Butler, who is like an out and out star who does so by dominating inside the perimeter, inside the arc. And then you have Danny Green who is a three and D player and one of the best to ever do it in that role, who basically doesn't do a ton inside the arc. So we have very polarized perspectives in chat of Ochai Abaji. Um, Phoenix plays E says, so this move was just for cap relief, shaking my head. It looks that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it was so important to them to get off of $13 million for, I don't know, Dennis. Maybe they want to sign. Maybe they're talking to Gary and Gary's like, fine, I'll take the, the mid-level exception, I don't know. Rohan Yolo says respect the Danny Green floater. I don't know. A lot of stuff has been happening. Kai, what do you th what do you think about the last fifteen minutes of stuff happening? Uh, the state of news breaking is is cooked. That that was insane. <laughs> but I mean, there's, there's not a big reaction to this. It looked like they just tried to you know free up some bread for the summer, and you know, the team obviously gets a. I don't want to say like a little bit worse because like Dennis and Dennis and um, Spencer, they're like similar level guys. I don't think either one is really, you know, moving the needle either way, like in a crazy way. But this just seems like, you know, a cap thing. This this is something for like Nabil. He's, you know, going to be looking at the spreadsheets <laughs> and, and really, you know, getting into it. Well, Nabil is watching right now because he messaged and said, who the hell just compared Ochai to Jimmy Butler? So in <laughs> chat, Douglas, fight back. If you if you got some points to make in the chat, feel free. Coco says we're in a time of disinformation and misinformation. 
You know, yeah. I really like the delineation between the two because I think misinformation is like you don't do it meaning like you don't do it on purpose. But disinformation is like you are purposefully spreading disinfo. And I feel like one is more nefarious than the other. And so I like to say disinformation to the people I dislike and misinformation to the people I want better for. Um, yeah, but basically information is not in the best spot. Um, ND says at least Spence isn't in love with Darko right now. I swear, man, what happened? What? I like, I get it. Dennis gets a lot of minutes, but I don't know. From my point of view, am I missing on this? Is like, from your guys' point of view, the Dennis Darko stuff, is it like that overstated? Or what do you guys think about that, like, proposed, real, like, friendship or whatever? Like, on the basketball court, like, it hasn't really shown that. For, I think it's the perception of you want Scotty on the ball as much as possible. But I, I don't think that's, like, a, a immediate switch you can make or something that you can build towards, like, day day one use. Spence or even, like, Dennis makes sense as a ball handler besides – besides Scotty as he's figuring out that out, especially within the half court. Like there are situations where you have one of RJ or Scotty on on the court and the Raptors cannot get to the rim. Dennis was able was able to get to the rim, pr- provide some advantages. And I think that will be missed missed on the team. Yeah. Well it's it basically it's like the Raptors, Fred leaves, they have a huge hole at point guard. And the As you, I know you're not like low on point guards. You like point guards across the NBA. Point guards are really important. Good teams have great point guards, typically. Um, And great teams have good point guards, typically, or great point guards. All that kind of stuff. Basically, unless you're LeBron James, you need a a high-quality point guard. Um, They Their pivot was to get Dennis. Dennis obviously had to be a guard in the starting lineup and has been better than Gary this year, I think. And so that happens. They get quickly, which allows them to yeah. re- move Dennis off ball uh, more often. So he gets less touches, which he did. He takes less shots, which he did. But they also put wow. Dennis in a position where he has to help um, IQ at the point of attack because IQ's point of attack stuff didn't work as well. Oh, my God, Trey. Dallas your mist- your mistress team. Sheesh. Dallas is having a day. PJ Dallas Washington to Dallas. Damn. Seth Curry yeah. in a first. I like it for for Charlotte. Like PJ hasn't been very good. Like the shot hasn't hasn't been to the level that it was, and then everyone on the team hasn't been good defensively. I don't think he's like the wing defender that Dallas needs. But like with, but with um, like Gafford and um, PJ, they're both Luca type players, and if his shot re- like positively regresses, it makes a lot of sense. Um, Coco says, mistress team, question mark. The joke here is that Trey is not completely faithful to the Raptors. <laughs> and since Trey is, a, Trey is a handsome, eligible man, he can have his pick. <laughs> I'm not, just you forget anything I say. Man. That's just a joke. Just a joke. Just a joke. But Nabil says, Malik Monk and Kelly O share the same agent, fellas. Let's drink the dream. This reminds me of a tweet I saw. It was from Amir Blumenfeld. And he said, like, kids in the 90s. Oh, cool. Uh, you know, Shaq got traded to the Lakers. Kids today. OG Ananobi has been setting up a move uh, to the Knicks for some time now as his agent is the son of, you know, Rose in New York. And he shares an agent with like X and Y. Um, pretty funny. Old Tenelises says the Toronto Raptors are trading point guard Dennis Schroeder and forward Thaddeus Young to the Brooklyn Nets in exchange for point guard Spencer Dinwiddie and Dennis Smith Jr. Sources told Woj. I can't believe you come in here giving us the non-redacted tweets. You're trying to give us. I don't know if it's disinformation or misinformation, but I don't believe it for a second. Here's a fun one from Cody Wiles of Raptors Republic. It says, the only players with 400 points, 200 rebounds, and 200 assists on 50, 40, 80 splits, Kelly Olenek and Kevin Durant. Cody? I appreciate that you went and dug up a nice Thaddeus Young style statistic. However, I will not be paying it that much mind. Okay. I love stats like that. I love when people frame things like that. It just, yeah, exactly. it just works. That's Keeks will be on the podcast maybe in the next half hour or so. And I told her to get as many of her crazy stats as possible. Um, Tyler Bloomfield says, who do you guys see as the remaining potential Brown and Boucher suitors? Let's hit this. We haven't really talked about it yet. 
Okay, Trey, go ahead. A little trade monger. T R E D E trade monger. Like the the team that obviously makes the most sense is like the Lakers. Like, um, you can now that they they um have Spencer Din Dinwiddie like probably being bought out or sent somewhere else. You can take on D'Angelo Russell. It it makes it much easier. And if you can get a prospect back and a first, like it's a home run deal for the for the like for for the Raptors because you get that guy who's a great pick and roll player next to Yaka Prado with the the ability of IQ to play off the ball. I think it would one help their overall offense in in general because they have a true organizer, and two everyone would now be playing like what they should do traditionally. Okay, hell yeah! First of all, secondly, Douglas is fighting back against Nabil and the other commenters. I love this quote, and this is regards to Ochai, for example, not for example, for in info, for context. Quote: Watched his highlights in college and his defense in the NBA. He's very athletic and can shoot a lot better than he has he has so far, and drives to the basket very well. Solid min mid range shot as well. Not only am I impressed that you came back with insights, which I appreciate and I love, you used the semicolon properly. Hell yeah, Douglas. Very, very impressive. So as far as like the mid-range shot making, if anybody wants to know, because that is a big part of Jimmy Butler's game, Ochai in the log mid-range in his rookie season, 44%. Um, he only took nine shots in the long mid-range. He's three of six from the long mid-range so far this year. In his rookie season, he was 31 of 62 for 50% from the short mid-range. He's nine of 32 for 28% this season. So we've seen the highs. We're seeing a little bit of a low. Um, mid-range overall, his first year, 49%. This year, 32%. Very low volume. That kind of stuff can turn around. Douglas, I hope you're correct about the mid-range stuff. I hope it starts to pop off as well. We'll see about that three point shooting. I'm I'm willing to to like take some drink the optimism on uh, Ochai. I think so. Yeah, um, yeah. Coco says can tell who you like, Samson. It's trade monger for friends and trade pervert for the masses. That's correct. We're we are kinder we are kinder to those we know. <laughs> um, P. Gall Gale says Dinwiddie will be a raptor for less than three hours. I think that might be true. Rig Papa says, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Oof, big time. Definitely agree with that. Uh, I don't know. What do we talk about now? Well, well the, the first that Charlotte got was only top two protected for 2027. They got that and two seconds. That interests you? That's a W. Call me a monger. Call me avant-garde, if you will, but that's a W. You are avant-garde, and that's the thing, too. You always call other people avant-garde, but you are yourself avant-garde. I don't I don't think so. I feel like I'm I'm just like the everyday man. I know. It's like not. it's very counterculture to use the wish.com AirPods. I'll just I'll say that right now. The, the chat was the chat was defending me. All AirPods sound like this. For real? Yeah, yeah why, do you, why, do you, you why do you guys buy AirPods? It just they, they, they uh, catch on the ecosystem, bro. That's true. I'm not in the Apple ecosystem. I don't have a single Apple product. That's avant-garde. I think that is avant-garde. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. Um, Nabil says Mitch Jack burning his life for a sunset he will not see. Okay. That's really maybe. Deep. All right. Yeah, that's a fact. I, I like, like that. It was. Like the I. I heard something. This this is not basketball related at all, but something extremely funny that I hope everyone can appreciate. There was somebody, a really horrible man, and I heard on a podcast they were talking about the really horrible man, and they didn't want to wish death on him publicly. So they said, we wish him a very gentle passing, which I thought was like a really funny way to say you hope someone dies. <laughs> And yes. I think it's 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 from the same ilk as the like Mitch Kupchak burning his life for a sunset he will not see, um, talking about death, etc. Yeah. This is a basketball podcast. Have you have you seen Steve, Steve Clifford's comments like nearly every day? Steve Clifford's no, but Steve Clifford when he comes to Toronto is like one of my favorite quotes ever. I love talking basketball with him. But clue me in. Yesterday he said. They brought me in here to play defense, and I'll be honest with you, I have failed miserably. 
<laughs> yeah, nah, his his post game quotes are insane. Like he's brutally oh, honest. That's a fact. Damn. I would I would credit him for saving Dennis Smith Jr.'s career though. You really turned it around last year. Yeah, that was huge with Dennis. Ali Dez says, I got cheap imitation AirPods on Timu, and they're decent, just the battery sucks. My son has legit AirPods Pro 2 for comparison. I'll tell you something, Ali. I hate Timu so much because they blew up my phone with so many advertisements, and they had this insane jingle. It was like this woman, and she was, being, she was like, I feel so rich. I feel like a billionaire. And then the jingle was her just saying, like, shop, shop, shopping like a billionaire. It made me so angry, man. I must have heard that ad like 85 times in the span of a month. It was terrible. Anyway, we've lost 100 viewers over the past 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the trades aren't really um, happening right now, I guess. So how do we feel about the Raptors right now? The starting lineup is the same as it was, I reckon. It'll be IQ, yeah. RJ, Scotty, Gary, and Jakob. And that's kind of what we're sitting at. How do we feel about that going through the rest of the season? Cool. Um, if your team keeps it, it's, it's very good. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll say that. But um, I think it's the direction they should go towards, like, there's been a lot of situations, I think ND said it in the comments, where, like, you would have liked Grady to try to close the game. And whether they win or lose, like, he should be in those moments and trying to flesh that out. Like, with, like, every coach's, like, objective is to win games, and it makes sense why Dennis is in those situations. But we're in a, we're at a point in time where it's, it's wins and lessons. So I, I think you have to give him a chance to figure it out. Oh, apparently we've started competing with the Raptors show. So I guess that makes sense too. Yeah. Um, big shout out to Will and Blake. Go yeah. ahead. I gotta go anyways. So oh, you're out of here. I am. All right. Okay. Big man. Awesome. All right, Trey. Big Trey. We'll see you. Yeah. Thanks for hopping in. All right. Okay. See you, brother. Kai, it's just me and you now. The old Back man is gone. What do you what do you think? I mean, I think. Toronto did a, has done a really good job kind of pivoting towards direction. I feel like coming into this season, they were kind of trying to play both sides with, you know, having Pascal, OG, and Scotty and all that. So I think, you know, this trade deadline and all the trades they've done this year have really just shown them being willing to pick a direction. And I think that this rebuild was what Toronto needed to kind of, you know, retool things around Scotty and just have things make a lot more sense for the future, honestly. So I think they've done a pretty good job. Yeah, um, Caleb says Trey is going to go watch the Raptor show. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but also something interesting, which we talked about on the last podcast, the skills challenge, Tyrese Maxey and Scotty Barnes, they're on the same team again. Is that wow. after, do you remember when they had, like they didn't make a single shot and it was the worst anybody's ever seen? And now they get like a chance of redemption as part of Team All-Stars. So there's, Team top picks, Paolo Boncaro, Anthony Edwards, Victor Weminyama. There's team pacers, Hal Burton, Matherin, Turner. And then there's team all-stars, Scotty, Tyrese, and Trey Young. Which team do you think wins? I would pick the pacers, but Benedict Matherin, when he has to pass something, I think it's going to go really rough. So I'll, I'll say team first pick. Team first pick? Yeah, I'll say team first pick. I like that. I think... That would be fun. Like, Paolo and Anthony and, and Vic, they're all very, very impressive. And there's, like, yeah. But I'll go with Team All-Stars because, I am I don't know, it makes it more compelling to hope for Scotty to win something. I think, like, I True. typically try and skew away from homerism as often as I can. But, yeah, I feel like I'll, I'll ding the bell of homerism right there. Um, and I honestly, there's a, the most interesting through line in the skills challenge thing is the fact that, like, Scotty and Tyrese had quite literally the worst performance you could ever have. They awful. missed they missed layups, they missed jump shots, they didn't hit a single thing, and now they have a chance of redemption on the biggest stage in Indiana. Um and Trey Young also like he balls out constantly. So yeah. yeah. ND says Scotty got to do his job and recruit Tyrese here. What what do you what do you think about that guy? Do you think that there's a good possibility? No, I think, <laughs> like, I mean, I would love for this to be like a world where, because we've seen it happen in the past, like, you know, 
like, oh yeah, we should definitely team up. Like, yeah, come on, let's do it. Like we saw Katie and Kyrie do that. But I, I don't think that's you know realistic. I think this is just an event they're doing. I don't think there's gonna be any kind of like, you know, yeah, you should come to Toronto, man. Like, oh yeah, I'd love to. Like, no. That's a tough sell, you know, it right is. now. Especially right especially, now. especially since Tyrese plays with Embiid yeah. and like has huge numbers next to Embiid. And I don't know what happens. I don't think Embiid comes back for the playoffs based on like I think he's out. But yeah. Um ND asks, by the way, do you think Scotty can have the Halley effect where he can get players to want to play in Toronto? I think the Halley effect is maybe overstated because of the Pascal thing. Uh, the Pacers, based on information I have heard, liked Pascal a lot. Like, just based on Pascal being Pascal, outside of Tyrese. Tyrese making this leap makes that trade easier to do but the Pacers also tried to trade for Pascal this summer that's the package I talk about the you know that was discussed in the summer that didn't go through because the Pacers didn't want to say yes to it without a guarantee from Pascal but it was Buddy Nemhard and two first round picks was the bait was kind of the package that was being discussed for Pascal during like the summer league era Pascal wasn't willing to re-sign with the Pacers just then still wanted to be with the Raptors so there you have it, right? The the trade doesn't go through. Obviously, the Pacers are doing better than some people expected. Hal Burton is, you know, an all-star starter. He's incredible. They punched the ticket. And then the Pacers being willing to probably give Pascal the max is the biggest motivation. I know Halley being there is, like, important. But um, the max is going to be important to Siakam, obviously. So I don't think Halley has that much pull. I know J.J. Redick talked about it on the podcast where he's like, oh, guys want to play with him? We need to see that stuff proven over time, I think. And you need to see guys like, um, yeah. ND says, if that was the package, you just put three bullets in my heart. Yeah, Kai Kai can attest to this. As I was as I was telling, like, the friends, that kind of stuff, even, even during, like, the early back in, like, October or November when I was telling the guys – that, you know that that was the the summer package a lot of them were <laughs> very it young. was it was a tough pill to swallow man yeah but some of us more than others and you know in the friend group but <laughs> it was tough tough to see yeah. it would it would have been really cool to have Nemhard in toronto because i think he he just fits he fits what scotty needs really really well from a defensive point of view and i think he fits really well with iq i think that he's like his offense as a driver can really pop off over the next couple of years so We'll see. Also, um, P. Gall Gale asks, or P. Golly Gale asks, Brown, Boucher, and Dinwiddie trade destinations. Um, Trey kind of talked about this, but yeah, I think you could expect Boucher, maybe like the the Suns or the Mavericks, but of course, a wild card team could always come out, or he could end up not getting traded at all. Brown, I think the Lakers. I thought the 76ers were in on Brown. I heard stuff. But they obviously went and got Buddy, so I don't think there's as big a role there anymore. I guess we'll see what happens. New York, they got Bogdanovich and they got Burks, so that's maybe not as viable anymore. And as Trey said, maybe the Lakers are the team who makes the most sense. Um, maybe there's a Brown plus whatever trade for D'Lo. I guess we'll see. But any thoughts on that, Kai? Any thoughts on outgoing situations? Uh, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Basically covered it all. I think. The kind of Bruce trade spots are kind of dwindling down as teams are, you know, pivoting in other directions. So the Lakers are really kind of the last place. And with the coming out that, you know, DeJounte might not get moved, I think that L.A. is kind of, you know, looking to do something to kind of, you know, kickstart something. So I can see Bruce Brown getting dealt there. And Boucher, I wouldn't be shocked if he just remained a Raptor, you know, for the rest of this season. Do you, um, What do you think about the OKC trade as far as, like, Gordon Hayward? Oh uh, yeah, I think I think it was great, but he just has to, you know, remain healthy. But I think he really fits, and I think that Josh Giddy is a guy who doesn't really kind of fit in their lineup. And I would like to see Gordon Hayward kind of, you know, take his spot in the starting lineup. But really, with Hayward, you know, he's always great. He's always productive, especially on offense. But he just has to stay healthy. Health has always been the question with him. But if he's healthy, I think that he definitely improves OKC a lot. Yeah, we've seen like Gordon is a really fun offensive wrinkle to throw at teams that want to 
Like we just saw the Raptors almost beat one of the best teams in the league because they blitzed SGA really well. And that catch and hold game of Giddies, even though he did end up scoring 24 points and leading the team in scoring that game, and he did have a good shooting game, I just, if you can get Gordon Hayward as like a catch and work with advantage guy instead of Giddy, I think you're in a way better spot, like a way better spot. And I think size defensively helps. If he, Gordon, I think is like a really unique swing that they don't have to give up too much. And as far as like, hmm, they don't have to give up too much. And the upside, if you get a healthy run, means that like you can, you can get like maybe like the third or fourth star slash impact kind of guy across a couple playoff rounds. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to, you know, waste, let's say like draft capital or all that kind of stuff to try and be and punch up a contender status. You can see what happens with it this season. I really like that trade for them. I've been yeah. wondering about what happens with Hayward for some time because honestly, more than anything, I watched the Raptors play them. And when Hayward was healthy, you can see like he very clearly can really work in the middle of the floor for sure. and, and yeah. can be one of the best players on the floor when, you know, ga the game is slowing down and is like a tremendous decision maker with the ball. And now that he's like expectations for him aren't that high, you know, it's pretty easy to just like, well, we'll see what happens. You don't have to pay that much, and you might get like a really great return. It's like uh, Nicholas Batum on on steroids in some sense. Like how Batum, when he was on the Hornets, went to the Clippers, and Batum was wasn't really giving the Hornets anything. But on the Clippers, he immediately was giving like lots. You know, like whoa, we got this really good three and D player with like a significant amount of playmaking pop who can you know provide like un unique and versatile looks defensively. I think that it's like that. But it has an even higher, I guess, ceiling on it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Lowry to the 76ers. Are you interested in that at all? Do you think that that's um, interesting? I just like, if if MB doesn't come back, I'm not sure what the 76ers are doing. Because mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't know exactly what they're building for. Because it would make sense. It would be very telling if they started kind of like shuffling the deck for next season. But if they're trying to bring Lowry onto the team for this year, then kind of like, eh, you know, what's going on? Mm -hmm. It is just kind of like a, you know, meh kind of thing. Because with Embiid's health, they say he's going to be out. Not even. They say he's going to be reevaluated, you know, in that long time frame of like four to six weeks. And that's not even ensuring that he comes back. So I think Lowry this season, if he doesn't come back, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because it would just be kind of a waste of time because without Embiid, obviously, you're not really going to do anything. So as far as fully this season, if Embiid's not coming back, then I really don't know what they do, honestly. Yeah. I I guess, like, so much is up in the air. We got a lot of trades this morning, man. We're, like, in the early yeah. afternoon, too. Like, a lot, a lot. I remember heat last really year. Fast. Pardon me? I say heated up really fast, the trades. Yeah. It's uh, it's like uh, yeah. There's been a lot going on. It's tough to keep track of it all, honestly. Like I still, especially doing this live, it's a lot easier to keep track of trades when you're not also speaking like for most of an hour or whatever. If you're just like scrolling, I have to catch up on a bunch of stuff. But I guess we can recap what the Raptors have done to this point, right? Yeah. Let's let's do that. Okay. So what the Raptors have done for any late comers. We have Kelly Olenek, Ochai Abaji coming to the Raptors, going out the worst of their collection of 2024 first round picks, which will likely be the Oklahoma City pick, which will probably fall between the 27th pick and the 30th pick. OK, that's happening. Also in that package, Otto Porter Jr. and Kyra Lewis Jr. That is a trade. Secondly, we have another trade. Dennis Schroeder goes out the door. And Dennis Schroeder gets traded along with Thad Young for Spencer Dinwiddie. So we're sitting at a team that has more shooting than it did before, less, less of a driving presence than it did before. It has more money going in, into next year. Do you have a letter grade? You do a lot of quick reactions. Do you have a letter grade on the, the trade deadline so far for the Raptors? 
for the trade deadline so far, I I gave it like a B plus. I think that they've you know done pretty well. And these are not like some crazy like high risk moves, I feel like. But I really like getting, you know, Kelly Olenek. Kelly Olenek was a really good rotation guy and kind of taking a flyer on Ochai. And freeing up money for next year is always a good thing, I feel like. And you really want to free up some minutes as well for some of the young for some of the younger guys on the team. So when it comes to like, you know, maneuvering and a rebuild, I think they've done a pretty good job today. What do you think about Abaji? Like I, I have talked about him a little bit. Trey talked about him a little bit, but like, what have you seen from him? Abaji, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't seen too much from him, but I think that he is a guy who can be, you know, kind of off the ball. He's also a guy who's, you know, pretty big. He kind of works, you know, as you know, just size on defense. And I think that his three point shot, you know, is kind of coming along. I think in his rookie season, he shot 35 percent from three. I want to say, and yep. in this season, I think it's down to like 32 percent ish. So I think there's some potential there as a three-point shooter. And, yeah, I think he's just a solid off-ball guy and a guy who I don't mind them taking, you know, a chance on. I think um, – I talked about this at the top of the podcast, but I think that being athletic, caring a lot defensively like hustle, and having good footwork is really, really important. And that, outside of the jumper, which needs to hit for Abaji, if he can't shoot the ball like 37 38% from three – He's going to have a tough time sticking in the league into that second and third contract. Um, that's that's what I think is important. But defensively, I think that he has really good footwork navigating screens. I think he has really good footwork in isolation. I haven't seen that much off-ball stuff because you firstly go to like get defensive film. You're going to get on-ball stuff. I still have to like poke around. And Lewis, I'm sure, is probably writing the piece right now if it's not already sure. out on, on RaptorsRepublic.com. But... I have to look at some of the, the off ball stuff to see like how proactive he is as far as like nail help, how quick he is to make like the rotations up to the three point line, where his court coverage is. Um, but as far as like off ball backline stuff, he definitely gives you more pop as like a guard slash wing that can go up and like he has really high block percentages as far as like the the guard slash wing thing. Van Hoot 2234 says Zatsman already wrote the piece done. Of course he did. He is the fastest gun in the West, man. For Lewis, sure. here we go. What will Ochai Abaji and Kelly Olenek bring to the Raptors? Done and dusted already, man. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's already working. he's doing the trade deadline open thread as well, 2024 edition. Raptors trade for Kelly Olenek and Ochai Abaji. Trade, de- trade deadline open thread, 2024 edition. What will Ochai Abaji and Kelly Olenek bring to the Raptors? He is a volume shooter. Hardest and says, in the show business right there, man. Yeah. Um, ND says Jazz fans told me he's really active off ball as well. His explosiveness slash vertical is really good. I think you're talking about Lewis Satsman, the writer, and I agree. No, just kidding for everybody. We're talking about Abaji. Um, Van Hoot says faster release than Grady. Um, Grady's jumper as well. Certainly. Um, I talked about that at the top, but yeah, he is he has a very quick release. There's not much dip. And Spitz says no mention of Dennis Smith moving reported on ESPN in the Schroeder trade. Yeah, we we talked about that already. Yeah, at a great deal, kind of complaining about the, the yeah, media. We kind of accepted our fate already with that, sadly. Yeah. Actually, so t- can you do tell me what you think about Kelly Olinick quickly? And I'm gonna try and pull an interesting piece from uh, Lewis's article. I'm sure he has like a nice little stat. Yeah, Kelly Olenek this year, I think he's averaging his a career high in assists. So he's a guy who can definitely kind of, you know, move the ball around. And everybody knows what he can do as a floor spacer. And I think that in the context of having, you know, Scotty there, in the context of wanting RJ to continue to, you know, thrive on drives, and in the context of having, you know, another guy for IQ to pass out to, it's really a great deal. Obviously, you know, he's Canadian, so maybe that'll make some of the fans kind of happy. But Kelly Olenek, obviously a great rotation guy. He's kind of solid on defense. He has a lot of size there. But I think his offense is really what he was gotten for. And I think he just makes a lot of sense, you know, in the context of this team. So I'm reading Lewis's piece, and basically what he's saying about Abaji is he he and I were coming at it from the same point of view. So I just be repeating, but if people don't want to listen to this, go to RaptorsRepublic.com. If you want to just quickly read and get like an info dump on the newest Raptors, that's a better, more linear way to do it than being right here. 
Azim Ali says, LOL, what if we're clearing room to sign OG in the offseason? I really don't think that's the case. I mean, like, that would obviously be super funny, but that's that kind of stuff just doesn't really happen, especially with a player of OG's quality. Um, Thomas Aitken says, Kelly feels like a good culture guy. I think so, too. Um, Kelly is really well-liked by a lot of... Um, by a lot of players around the league, even with still having a couple dirty plays in his past as well. Like Kelly uh, has had a couple, Kelly has had a couple plays that like obviously would players would bristle at. So you have to be able to like really ingratiate yourself with players to kind of put that in the past. And he's been able to do that. And he's really well liked as a teammate. He's also really well liked on team Canada. He is somebody I think that will stay with the Raptors for some time. As Jericho H says, I just realized Kelly th is 32. Yep, he is 32, I think. And this is maybe his last meaningful contract in the NBA. But he also is a, a big who gives you 4.4 assists in 20 minutes per game off the bench. He shoots 40% from three. He's mm. such an intelligent, connective playmaker. He really is an impressive player. He's going to give the Raptors good minutes for a couple years at least, I think. And I think he will. Yep. Yep. Still a snapback guy. He, he got married. He got married in a snapback, dude. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, no, he's he's locked in with the snapbacks. He, he Exactly. That's why I tweeted it out, man. That's why, mm -hmm. you know, there's that. I can't remember what league. I think it was maybe like the like league one into championship or whatever. But in England. There's that that fan who takes the swig of beer and he says, yeah. that tastes like promotion. And I was like, <laughs> I I was like man, man. this is this is the all the stores in Toronto that sell snapbacks. They're like, Kelly is in Toronto. We're oh, selling man. snapbacks by the boatload. Yeah, um, bring the snapbacks out. Yeah, exactly. I remember that was like during the um you would have been young, young during this, but I was yeah, like in child. high school. During the swag era, right? Yes. Like I'm wearing a fitted cap right now, but I remember back when like the snapback was everything and everyone used the term swag all the time. And everybody like took those like baked like crate. They had skinny jeans and would wear like really tight hoodies and mm -hmm. would wear snapbacks with the straight bill and would be like, ah, you know, in like <laughs> pictures all yeah. the time. Dark times, man. Dark times. I'm glad we got past that. Totally. And people would wear those big, like, Osiris shoes or, like, DC shoes. Oh, yeah. Which, they're coming back into style, by the way. Which the Rob Deerdeck shoe, I think. That's the one. Yeah. Rob Deerdeck. He, he's the ridiculousness guy, shoes. isn't he? Rob Deerdeck. Does he do, like, the ridiculousness show? Is that the guy? Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah. Scramble says, Masai trading expiring salary like it's worth gold. Yeah. I think uh, the Dennis trade because we did, we just talked about you know we recapped Kelly and um, Ochai for Otto and Kira and the first round pick. It's like not a home run, I don't think. But anyway, the Dennis trade. Let's recap that quickly. Thoughts on it? it seems from the top down view, Dennis and Thad go out. Spencer comes in. It looks like this is purely about contract not having somebody on the books for next season. Uh, you're, I don't understand you. I appreciate this about you for what it's worth, but I don't understand you as being an individual who is like looking at the cap sheet a ton. I know you watch a lot of basketball. You like talking about the on-court stuff, but um, if you can put on the little cap pervert hat, what are your thoughts on clearing cap <laughs> space? No, that's crazy. But I mean, you know, when it comes to salary cap moves, it's always nice to have a little freedom, a little flexibility when it comes to contracts. And maybe you can get, you know, sign a, a nice veteran next season, you know, for Toronto to kind of, you know, be a good culture guy and maybe teach some of the younger guys some things. So I think that cap flexibility is, you know, always a good thing. And when you're a team that's rebuilding, it's okay to, I guess, get a little bit worse, if that makes sense. So I think this is a, a fine move, but I, I'm not really, you know, crazy about it. I would have been fine keeping Dennis and, you know, letting him ride out his contract. But this is a move, like, I understand it, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going crazy about it. I, I, I really wonder, because this is what I've been saying on the reaction podcast for however long was like, and what I said at the live show is like, I wonder what this looks like. I wonder what this looks like after the trade deadline. 
I wonder, you know, how the rotation shapes up, what the roster looks like, and how they can kind of curate an identity now that not everybody's out on the move. And once they have guys who know they're going to be there and that kind of stuff, um, mm -hmm. I think that's important. Coco says we still have labor hero Garrett Temple. That's right. If you want to build culture, you start with the man who wears turtlenecks and mock necks and really clean suits. Um, ND says El Mayo per Pat Bev pod. Pat Bev is a buck. Hmm. You know what else is a buck? A loony. What do you think about Canadian money, Kai, as an American? As, as an American, I think Canadian money is really, really funny. It sounds like, you know, like a game, like Looney and Tooney and whatever else y'all got and how, like, it's all different colors and stuff. And I heard that, like, yeah, had, like, scratch and sniff money. Is, is that true? Okay, so they – I don't think I have a $100 bill on me. I'm not nice like that. I don't – I'm not like Trey. Um, I think that they said that the $100 bill, if you scratched it, it would taste, smell like maple syrup. But I, I thought that was always like Cap. I thought that was oh. like an old wives' tale or something like that. You know? That's kind of disappointing. Yeah. But it is. Pat Bev to the Bucks. Oh, I don't really care. Pat Bev gets gassed, man. I mm -hmm. If Pat Bev has like an impact on the playoff run, I'll be shocked. Like, yeah, it's pretty true. I, and I just. He talks a lot about his game. He talks mm -hmm. a lot about himself. And I don't like he has some good insights because he's an NBA player who vocalizes his insights. So he'll have some good ideas, obviously, and he'll give some insights that you just wouldn't get elsewhere. But mm -hmm. when so much of that is wrapped up in like my legacy as a defender, I'm like, this is this compelling? Not really. And also like he he's gassing it, man. Which is also the thing is like, why why do we have players and analysts when they're just like going to like elevate their own legacy or like defend their own legacy or anything like that? Like that was what Paul Pierce was doing a ton of. He's like, well, you know, me versus oh, X yeah. and he Y. Was yeah. I was like, why? You know, he was so, like, yeah, I was better than D Wade back in the day, and everybody yeah. was just like, no. It's like, what is it? Because you're supposed to get insights on other people, not necessarily just like defend your own legacy. And I feel like. Pat Bev falls in that group. And I also think he's really good at promoting himself. So he gets talked about as if he's a better, like more impactful player than he is. But he just, I don't know. He doesn't move the needle for me at all. Yeah, no, um, not really. But yeah. Tom M says, I don't see Kelly as a yak replacement. We'll have both on the roster. Agreed. Big time. Um, I'm getting a little I nervous get... because the clock is ticking down and I'm not seeing a Bruce Brown trade. Well, that's that's what ND asked. ND was like, um, "What do you say? If we don't get a first round pick for Bruce, how disappointed would you be?" I will be pretty surprised if Bruce doesn't get traded, and that really does kind of obfuscate the Raptors' ideals going forward, or how they want to be building and all that kind of stuff. Because on the one hand, like Bruce, if Bruce is playing his best basketball does make sense on the Raptors. He's an expensive makes sense guy, but he does make sense. The thing is, he hasn't been playing well, and he's an expensive hasn't been playing well guy. And you think the easiest way to get him to play well would be if he went back to a contender because he was like a major part of a championship team last mm -hmm. season. He's, he's a big deal as a player, and correctly so. He just hasn't been playing like it that much as a Raptor. If he's going to bring it, then like fine. The same way that Kelly provide will provide like good looks for players and will give guy help guys get like meaningful reps. I think that's all important, but I don't expect Bruce to be well. I don't expect Kelly to make twenty million dollars a year like Bruce will, and I don't expect Bruce to be a guy who is on the team. And if he's not there, I just I don't know. I. I think it makes sense to trade Bruce. And I think Bruce certainly thinks it makes sense to trade Bruce. <laughs> like Bruce he was like salivating over the idea of playing with Tom Thibodeau. I've never seen that before. A guy on one team, and he's like, Oh yeah, I can do whatever this coach needs me to do. That was pretty crazy. 
that I've never seen that before either. I think that's really interesting. Like Bruce wants to be traded so bad. He's watching this right now. He's in chat. He's like, what do you guys got for me? <laughs> you know, like he, he's waiting on the news. He's scrolling. He's just trying to hear something right now. I don't know what's happening with it, but yeah, I, as Andy asked the question, would I be disappointed? Um, yeah, I think I would be disappointed, but to Yabut's point, what Bruce pugs in anywhere, he always makes adjustment in game to whatever the team needs that day. I think that is um, true when he's motivated. I don't think he's been super motivated to play like that type of basketball for the Raptors. And that's that's totally fine. We've seen OG quiet quit, who was on the team for years, won a championship here. We saw Pascal quiet quit defensively. And he was on the team. He was obviously a major part of the Raptors. I don't blame Bruce for being like, because when Bruce got to Toronto, I expect they had conversations like between front office and Bruce, like, hey, you guys are probably looking to trade me, right? Can I go to a contender? I expect that happened. And that's probably why he felt comfortable saying, Tom Thibodeau, hey, I could do whatever you need. Like, I fit in like a glove here, man. You know, Memento AO says, I was quiet quitting watching the game sometimes. That's true. Everybody quiet quitting, man. That's why they need to be able to, you know, to change paths, build culture, work on the team going forward, all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll see. The Raptors are so in flux right now. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm not like, I just, maybe, I don't really know what to to make of it. I don't really know what to, you know, your book says Bruce came through in the second half last night. Yeah, he, he had some nice plays. It was pretty no frills from him. Um, I don't, I didn't think his defense was that impressive, to be quite honest with you. Um, Samuel Barefoot says Bruce, he posted a pic of himself in a Raptors jersey, LOL. I mean, okay. Yeah, but I don't like, know. I don't. I feel like I know maybe it's part of my job to try and like dig through what players do on social media. That was kind of like what happened last year. I think it was Michael Grange. We were sitting across from Fred and everybody was making a big hubbub about Fred unfollowing everybody on Instagram. And Michael was like, you know, Fred, uh, you know, on Instagram. And like Fred come up, cut him off and was like, Mike. I didn't think it'd be you, Mike. You're not going to make me answer this, Mike. And he's like, well, you know, people are wondering about it. You know, you unfollowed everybody on Instagram or whatever. And he was like, no, I'm just doing a reset. But it's like it feels weird to have to pay attention to like what a player posts on Instagram to get yeah. insights into what might be going on. Because like reading the tea leaves. I get it. But it, I just it feels like a fruitless endeavor so often because you never really know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. Keeks will be here soon and, uh, she'll give us some stats I need her to bring some, and then, uh, we'll go from there. Um, oh, yeah, I gotta get a body. I gotta go to class. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Leave yeah. me alone. Yes. I'll, I'll sit here. I'll sit here and talk with chat. There was somebody at the end of the podcast last night or the other night who was like, is this kind of surreal? Just talking to yourself all the time, dude, it is. And Makai, when you take this job from me and you find yourself in a room talking to yourself, you're going to be like, damn, this is like kind of interesting. Man, I'll do it with a smile. It would be kind of, you know, surreal, though, to go from yeah. not a Raptors fan to watching every game and talking about it after. That's going to be an insane reality for me. You are a Raptors fan, Kai. You've always been a Raptors fan and you will <sighs> remain a Raptors fan. I don't know what to tell you. Until, gonna, until you uh, until you get a job in New York media, then then the no, yeah, for sure. Then it's like yeah. goodbye, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything you want to say before we get out of here? Um, everybody, keep y'all heads up, man. This is how a rebuild is supposed to be. You get worse to get better in the future. The games are gonna be rough. Toronto is not good anymore. Just you know, keep it up. Just have a good time with it. It's, it's basketball. Um, eight 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 MJL says Makai, you will do it and you will like it. <laughs> 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 that's good all right kai get out of here uh, i'll see you yep bye bye yg7 says media members feel weird about reporting what players post team related on social media no I, I don't mean it necessarily like that what i mean more so is like 
trying to because it was team related but like for example the fred example i gave that isn't team related that's just like who he follows like fred i think unfollowed his his girlfriend at the time in the same span like he unfollowed like everybody and you're asking about it clearly that's like an interpersonal thing but you have to ask him about that from like the team perspective and also like bruce yes a social media post of him in a raptors jersey i get it but like players do a lot of stuff on social media and fans notice everything so you know there's a lot of stuff that gets talked about like your likes your retweets all that kind of stuff and i think fans sometimes expect media members to kind of like weigh into that and ask players and that feels maybe kind of like uncomfortable or i don't really i don't really know how to navigate that it feels um i don't know invasive i suppose cuz there's enough basketball happening that we can just talk about basketball i feel like yg7 says copy that um yeah i hope i hope i answered um to the question in a good enough manner um caleb asks do you know the math on the extensions for scotty and iq curious how much cap space the raptors will have afterwards well iq's max extension i don't know exactly what that would be and i don't know what scotty's would be actually scotty can't sign his till next year so that doesn't really matter although i can go poke around and find what scotty's um guarantee is for next year and then i'll tell you what that is my guess is that oh, we have Baker in chat. Baker, what's going on, man? Um, okay, why? Well, I, I got to look at some Scotty um, contract stuff. Tell me what you think about the Raptors from your point of view. Um, uh, let, the, let the people know. Um, it's been a busy deadline for them. I didn't yeah. think they – I mean, it's been busier than I would have expected. I thought maybe just the Bruce Brown trade would be the end-all, be-all. But, uh, you know, getting Ochai, Kelly um, – Spencer Dinwiddie from Brooklyn. Um, you know, these are good, these are good, uh, these are good trades for what the, for the assets that they've uh they've given up. I'm kind of shocked that Bruce Brown's still on the team for now. Um, mm -hmm. I thought maybe they would try to move him for first, but uh getting, you know, Ochai, who was a lottery pick, getting Kelly, Kelly Olenek, who's a who's a very, very who's a very good player. I can attest to that myself, you know, because he's played on Boston <laughs> for yep. me. But uh, uh, yeah. Overall, I, I like the the deals that they've made. Um, you know, obviously you would have to pay. You know, moving Dennis was smart because then next year you would have had to pay him. Um, and then you know Dinwiddie could probably flip him for assets. You know, if he doesn't want to stay, which I I think he might not want to. Um, and you know you get you you now have like a well rounded team. You know, around a bunch of young guys and nice veterans. Um, I think this is good because now I think with I think Grady and RJ and Scotty and um, IQ they can now have like have like a nice um, a nice stretch of games where they can all play together. Even though if it won't contribute to winning, if they all have like a nice you know end to the season, um, I think you could you could very much like you know have some optimism into next year about like how like they will start the season. Yeah, it's I, I like I like the Utah trade in particular. I don't love it, I don't think, because I'm like, damn, you know, I, I would have liked to not have spent a first round pick, I guess. But yeah, that's where I'm sitting. To answer Caleb, um, Scotty's contract for next year is the cat figure per spot rack or spo track or spo track, whatever the hell it is. Ten million dollars, a hundred and thirty thousand. $980. So 10.1 million is Scotty's contract for next year. If I had to guess Emmanuel quickly, what he's going to sign, I, ass I assume it's going to be four years. And I assume it's going to be between 24 and $32 million a year. That's where I'm sitting on Emmanuel's market. I don't think Emmanuel will get a max contract. So it doesn't really like the math on what his max currently is doesn't matter that much. Like, for example, like Malik Monk, his max is, you know, you can only pay him so much from an opposing team. And because he only signed a two-year contract, the Kings can only give him a certain percentage raise. There's like math to do there. But as far as Emmanuel quickly, his next contract, I don't think math is that important. It's just kind of like 
he won't get the max. So it's kind of what teams are willing to pay. Or like if there's a big offer sheet that gets thrown at him that the Raptors have to match. Um, but math stuff, 10.1 for Scotty. And I think Scotty, depending on how the rest of the season goes with an all-star plus all NBA bid can change the percentage of the cap that he's able to get on his max, his rookie max extension. So this stuff is still kind of up in the air. Um, that's kind of what it is. Spitz says, if there's no great market for Dennis, can't imagine there's a market for Dinwiddie. Yeah. I wonder with Dinwiddie, if he doesn't end up being bought out, that's oh, what, um, yeah. yeah. Daniel Hackett is in here. Daniel Hackett is like the salary cap whiz. And he's given me the information. Thank you, Daniel quote. IQ won't be getting his max extension. It would start at 35 million plus. My best guess is something like 25 to 30 million AAV for four years or some such based on past rumors. I think we're in the, we're in the, I said 24 to 32. Um, and I was thinking not even AAV. I was thinking about like starting salary. So yeah, we're pretty much in the exact same boat, Daniel. Thank you for the information, by the way. Daniel, while you're here, I'm going to ask you. Do you have any idea on the figures around Scotty's expected max extension based on cap projections? If you have that on hand, feel free to put it in chat, Daniel. And thank you very much. Um, Sham said Killian Hayes is being released. Interesting. Wow. Oh, this was, I was making a, I made a little thing. Um, oh yeah. I haven't talked about it yet, but uh, Spence, his contract paid out in Bitcoin, right? That did not work out for him. Like, obviously, yeah. Bitcoin is still really valuable. But at the time he signed it, it was a lot more valuable. Yeah. He's lost millions of dollars on that. Yeah, he's, um, lost, he's lost bread. I Like, I understand, you know, like, there is... Oh, God. No, I'm not going to do... The, I, I don't need to do cryptocurrency commentary right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. What... Um, ND says Killian Hayes to the Raptors, if you let me say it. So this was, I was making a list of guards that I've been in on that have worked out well and guards that I've like kind of missed on and guards that I'm currently in on. Feel free, Baker, to kind of add whoever you like. Um, so Malik Monk, I've been a big fan of from when he was still signing minimum deals. I thought he was like way more valuable to in like minimum deals I thought that he was, I wanted the Raptors to go after Malik Monk forever. I also felt the same way about Kobe White. I thought Kobe White was gettable. I thought Kobe White was a guy who was way better than he was performing. Those are the two like objective wins at this point. Currently, um, I also really like Tyrese Maxey ahead of the draft. He was yeah, the 20th overall pick or 21st, I can't remember. There is draft podcasts of me back then raving about him. So that's a win. Um, Devin Vassell also a win. But... Yeah. This year and over the past like two or three years, I've been very high on Jalen Noel, Jalen Green, and Jalen people were down on. I still really like Jalen Green. I really like Jaden Ivey. People are down on him. I really like Andrew Nemhard. I always loved Markel Fultz and Craig Porter Jr., a guy I was wrong on, Anthony Simons. Just a way better yeah. scorer and playmaker yeah. than I yeah. thought, mm -hmm. you know? So, but also on top of that, Killian was a guy I liked pre-draft and Killian was a guy I was kind of impressed about his defensive strides he's taken since coming into the league, but the shot not being there just makes everything like you. It's really hard to, to find minutes for Killian and for them to be like rewarding because he just doesn't have like the burst necessary to create and disrupt things like Nemhard hasn't shot the three ball well this year, but he's so good at getting into the lane. So yeah. good at pushing off too. So good at disrupting stuff that you're like, okay. YG7 says Trey Man. I know you like Trey Man. Um, all this kind of stuff. I kind of want to get your opinion. And Craig Porter Jr. Josh put me onto him. Of course, he's big Craig. Yeah, I like I like Craig Porter. I, I like Craig Porter. He has a nice little game. So, what? Who are some young guards that you like? Um, you kind of hit a. You, Don't you say Peyton hit. Pritchard for what it's worth. I, I will not. I will. I will. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I will. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah you kind of hit the head on the, a lot of them uh the maxis the, the sign i tried to tell you about anthony simons first. you did you were you were yeah. you're spitting um, yeah baby damian Lillard, man talk, talk about it uh, so, okay uh, now you're gassing it again man <laughs> but um 
but yeah, um, you know, the Maxis, you know, Kobe White was a good one because I didn't expect this like jump that he's made um since uh Levine one hurt went down. So um seeing him pop off is kind of nice. But uh um in terms of other guards, um young guards, uh damn, this, there's a lot of good guards in this league, but um I'd probably go um damn, I have to really think about this. Well, while you're thinking about it, Daniel came back with the numbers for Scotty. They'll be based on the cap at the time, which is expecting to spike. I'm not sure how much that'll affect Scotty's contract, but from Daniel Hackett, quote, yeah, Scotty, if he's signing a max extension, they can just bake in hitting those thresholds for all NBA. So if he hits them, they can upgrade to 30% automatically. Pascal did this and ended up at 28%. And Scotty's max would be about 39 million starting salary at 25%. 47 million if he upgrades to 30% with all NBA incentives with some assumptions on my part about cap growth End quote. Thank you so much, Daniel, because Caleb was asking. So those are the numbers for Scotty going into the future. Roughly Daniel is one of the best that kind of interpreting the cap and the CBA. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, Daniel and I came around the same point of view on Quickly's likely market being between, I said, 24 to 32 million. He said 25 to 30. Um, yeah, trade deadline stuff. Baker, you've now had a little bit of time to think about <laughs> guards you like in the NBA. Who do you got? Um, I was a big, big Cam Thomas fan, even in when he was at LSU. Um, are you? Are you still? Yeah, I, I good, still am. Good, yeah, I still, I still am. Um, the fact that he led the nation in scoring as a freshman, like, was was very telling of like what he could do in the NBA. Um. You know he doesn't play that much now, but uh, I was I was very bullish on Bones Highland. Um, oh yeah, still 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 think he could probably give some good minutes on a on a team that'll actually give him the opportunity. But uh, but yeah, he's a, he's a guy that you know is very dynamic with the ball in his hands and you know can can score really well. Um, Keontae George, somebody I really liked in the draft mm -hmm. in the draft. Um, you know he he has he has that um. Wait, kind of sorry, can I cut you off really quick yeah, and sure. we go right back to it? Did you watch the Bones Highland YouTube video where he was like playing one on one in Philadelphia that went yeah. viral? Yeah, oh. I've seen it. Yeah, that was yeah. a very influential video. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but yeah, um, Keontae George, I liked in the in the draft. Um, you know, just his the his ability to just you know get hot from all three levels, and you know can just like. It has a bit of has a bit of what's called um what I think uh has a bit of a dog in him I guess <laughs> <laughs> um uh, he so he can he kind of like he's been playing really well as of late so I kind of like him um in terms of this upcoming draft I like Rob Dillingham a lot sure he's he's very he's very very I know the size and the uh, and the what's called um the strength kind of concerns people but he is just electric with the ball in his hands just absolute like an absolute terror to guard on, on the, on offense. And, you know, um, he's played a lot more under control than I thought. Cause you know, watching him in high school <laughs> and OTE, you would think like this guy, like you kind of just need to reel him in a little bit and have him play within the structure. And he's played really well um, under those terms. Um, other guards. Uh, I like. Um, uh, damn. I kind of forgot. I kind of forgot his name, but uh well, you think about that. There's a couple of questions I can answer from chat. So Coco asks how buyouts work. So a buyout is a deal that the team and the player agree upon as far as like releasing this player from their duties of their contract. And so how that can work is like sometimes players will get their full contract bought out. Spencer Dinwiddie, for example, if he gets bought out by the Raptors, I suspect, suspect that they would agree upon less than the full sum of his contract they would buy out a portion of it he would agree upon that from his point of view and then he would be a free agent and would be on the buyout market to sign with whatever team he chooses for presumably a minimum contract and that's kind of how the buyout market works there are some more specific rules around it that i'm not super privy to that like kyle lowry for example is too big a contract for a certain type of buyout to join a certain type of team and i don't know those 
rules specifically. So my bad. I'm not the the CBA hawk like Blake. Um, Blake probably has a piece on it that he's written about with all these rules, honestly. But I, I don't know where to link that. But Blake is the very best at it, of course. Um, that's kind of how buyouts work. And then also we have Thomas Aitken saying several people talk a lot about needing another rim pressuring guard. Isn't that what we have in RJ? Are we looking for a sixth man to do it? Someone to take over for quickly when he struggles? This is a really good question. RJ is a rim pressuring guard, certainly. Um, and he's very, very important to the Raptors offense. I think everybody can you know, notice that when he's out there and what he provides. But then on top of that, too, you want like RJ is a guy who's mostly been doing it out of second side actions. He's been doing it as like an off ball cutter and a guy who's working against a tilted defense already. There aren't so many possessions game to game where RJ is taking like the first look on an offensive possession, working through that action, you know, mixing up the defense and getting downhill. I think RJ has been so good because he's dialed back the role a little bit and been like super opportunistic and super clinical in that secondary or ancillary role. You want somebody, a rim pressure guard, who is like every time they dribble that ball up the court, paint touch. They could get a paint touch. And RJ, while he's done really well as an ancillary guy doing that, he isn't necessarily like, I step on the floor, it's a paint touch. Something good is going to come from that. Quickly isn't that guy either. Scotty, I reckon, will be that guy someday, although he's not quite there with his handle. And that's kind of where we're sitting. That's I think it would be it would benefit the Raptors greatly to have like a really like a guy who can get a paint touch in a half a second almost whenever he wants that requires teams to throw like more aggressive pick and roll coverages at him. I think that would really benefit the team. And I am of the mind that the more ball handling on the team, the better. It's really good to be able to work from that point. Thomas Aitken says, gotcha, someone to bend the D from zero advantage. You're right on the ball, Thomas. Absolutely. Totally. Josh says, looks like Bruce is going to stay. I think the Raptors might be finished outside of a Boucher deal. I want to ask you about this because Kai said he would be disappointed if Bruce doesn't get traded. I feel the same way. Not in that I need Bruce to be traded, but just like kind of where the team has kind of messaged or signaled where they're going. What do you think about the Raptors process if Bruce is hanging around? Um, I mean, keeping him, like, would it make – I mean, it, you would want to move him simply because you want to keep assets, you want to have assets, and then, and then also just um, opening up more minutes for guys like Grady and Nuara and, like, all these, all these other young guys to just play a little bit more. Because you know, keeping Bruce like you're kind of just a, you're kind of just obligated to play him and not just sit him for the rest of the season. So um, I think moving him makes the best sense in terms of you just don't want to. So, does he have a player option or a team option after the season? There's a team option for 22 million, I believe. Which okay. and like I like I said before, it is Bruce is a good player who can fit into a lot of stuff. However. 22 million is pretty rich and especially for a team that's not contending pretty rich yeah. like that's pretty expensive yeah, exactly. and I hope he gets I hope he gets paid I hope he plays meaningful basketball I don't know if it's with the Raptors or elsewhere but that's pretty rich yeah so probably the best the best um you, you definitely want to move him within these next 55 minutes that we have right now because uh keeping him you're just you're kind of just uh that's like that's like stealing minutes from Brady, who's been playing really well lately, from like guys like um, or maybe like guys like Ochai, who who's gonna come, who's gonna gonna want minutes. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you're kind of just yeah, like the situation is just gonna be like a little weird because you want to see what you have in these young guys, and you know, having Bruce Brown on the team, you're kind of like you're kind of forced to play him in a sense. So um, I think it's just best to move him right now, even if even if it's for, like, even if it's not for the value that you want, you kind of still want to just clear as much playing time for all these young guys So you, because you kind of want to know, like, what you have from all the deals you made earlier today. Okay. Daniel is in chat extremely clutch. Um, he has more of the buyout information. From Daniel Hackett, quote, for the buyout rules, if a player makes more than the exceptions a team is eligible for, they can't sign them as a buyout. 
any wavy making more than MLE can only join teams below the hard cap. Yes, that I suspect is why people said the 76ers were creating cap space to get below that so that they could sign Lowry because Lowry makes more than the MLE. Um, yeah. On top of that, we have from P. Golly Gale, quote, if Bruce doesn't move now, can he be traded before picking up his option for next year, like around the draft? Okay. Big shout out as Fandiar Barahini, who actually figured out this nugget and wrote about it in a piece for Forbes. But um, his guarantee is after the draft. So he's still on this year's contract it's after the draft and before free agency really strange wrinkle for like that's like a really really strange wrinkle most players will have their guarantee like before that or something so the raptors could trade bruce on his first year contract at the draft and then that team trading for him because obviously trades during the draft are more fluent with the money stuff they could decide to guarantee that team option. Maybe there is a team that wants to kind of like load up for next season instead of this season. If Bruce doesn't get traded now, there is definitely some room for it to get kind of funky around the trade deadline is uh, the Bruce stuff. And, and big show for S kind of figuring that out because when he told me about that when I was at his house, you know, watching the Raptors game the other day and the Juve Inter game, uh, he told me about that. I was like, what the hell? Really? Is that the way his contract works? Very unique, very, uh, very interesting. Yeah, you had the it was the you had the baseball bat, right? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, definitely. Um, you know, because I feel like a lot of contenders would want Bruce Brown. You know, simply because of what he did last year with Denver, and um, so. Yeah, you gotta move him as soon as you can. Um, try to get as much back as possible, and um, you know, then you know you could see like the development of Grady, and you know, see what Ochai has, and you know, I forgot, I forget that Gary's still on this team, so you know, he he can play a little bit more. <laughs> but you're um, you're Gary Pilled. Wait, actually, let's let's visit that. You are Gary Pilled. For the people who don't know, Baker has been very very pro Gary. Like relative to consensus, you've liked yeah, his yeah. game. You've I'll, liked I'll his like game. It, yeah. yeah, you've liked his game. What do you think about like how it's been going lately? Expectations for him going into the future? The Gary Trent Jr. conversation. I think his services are probably going to be used elsewhere um, after the season, simply because he he has he do, he ha, he um, delivers a need that a lot of teams like and that's like you know spacing the floor you know being a little opportunistic on defense you know even sure. while he's not while he's not the greatest on ball defender he's a lot he's very he's very um he, he likes to gamble a lot and when he does gamble right um you know it, it forces a lot of turnovers like it causes a lot of defection deflections in the half court so um you know he does a lot of things that you know i think the what like a, a team that's on the rise of making a playoff push or wanting to make a playoff push would maybe acquire his services. But um, in terms of, you know, staying on the Raptors, I think it's, it's nice to do because, you know, um, it, uh, you, uh, you're, you, you get to keep a, 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 a shooter that's been on the team for a while. It's, you know, you have that continuity, you have that um, chemistry with like a lot of the young guys because he's not that old. I don't think he's that old um, compared to the rest of the roster. So, um, you know, keeping him keep, keeping him would be fine um, because, you know, he kind of fits Scotty's timeline and he kind of like meshes well with what Scotty wants to do on offense. And um, so um, I do think, you know, he might look elsewhere and, you know, to maybe find like another suitor for services. But, you know, keeping him would be fine. It just depends on like how much he's worth because I do think he's – this is the last year of his deal. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's probably my two cents because I still like, you know, he could still really shoot the ball, mm -hmm. you know, even though the on, off, on the on ball stuff isn't like fully there, you know, in pockets, you know, the little, like he has like little moves that, that gets, gives him a little separation, but, you know, he's still like um, very limited as the playmaker and, you know, the defense can kind of rear his ugly head on certain possessions, but, um, you know, his, his spacing, you know, his um, you know, his kind of like 
aggressive gambling style on defense could could be valuable to other teams. But uh, you know, if he stays in Toronto, that's fine. Okay. Um, we have a ten dollar gift from Josh. No comment along with it, but thank you very much for the ten dollars, Josh. Um, that's awesome. From Trevor Norlander as well says Raps free um, front office might not be overwhelmed with Bruce offers right now, and he should retain a lot of his value over the next year. I understand wanting to open minutes, but is a couple seconds worth it? Yeah, I think this is like this makes sense. There is a reasonable avenue to him like maintaining the value, and it might make more sense, as I said earlier, um, was shouting out S for kind of picking up this little wrinkle of his contract about like the the pre-draft, post-draft guarantees, etc. Um, it it could make sense just to keep um to keep Bruce. And Daniel Hackett mentions as a note, if the Raps trade Brown at the draft, they can only use whatever salary is guaranteed in the summer as salary matching. So they could trade him unguaranteed, but can't take salary back. Have to guarantee his salary ahead of time if they want to use it for matching at the draft. So say you want to trade him for a $10 million deal, you have to guarantee something like $5 million. Okay, here to talk about all of this is Fandiar Barahini. What's going Hello. on, man? Yo, what's going on? Hello. Busy day, right? Crazy. Yeah. We've been streaming for two hours. <laughs> Have you actually I, been? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Like, I definitely haven't had it in me. <laughs> Two hours of slop. I because oh, this isn't you either. This is not you. You're, you're this not, is not me. You're not slop, man. Man, you're not. When when because you know Kai left and Kai was gone. Yeah. And then I was like, uh oh, maybe this isn't gonna be so good. I was like, <laughs> I I've already given all of my analysis I possibly can. I don't know if I can do the trade slot forever. Then Baker like came in. It was like, right. you know, in like, uh, what is it? Like the, the Marvel, like Avengers, like the, on your left. Yeah. That was, he came yeah. to the, he came into the podcast like that. I was like, oh, there's other people to talk to. Fantastic. Coco <laughs> says waiting through the mis misinformation. Got it right this time. Yeah. Uh, S please. Um, if people want your um, very, uh, concise thoughts they can go to the forbes article but what are what are the loose thoughts raptors deadline so far um i like the olenic trade uh i i yeah. think i think people I, I see a lot of people split on it like it's like a point of contention because they traded a first right um but i still like it <laughs> like i i still like it i mean olenic is a really really good player he's having a great season for utah i know people are saying he's on the older side but like He's 32. He's not 35. Like, he's almost 33. He's almost 33. Like he's not, he's not an ancient player. He's a player that I think could still give you a couple of good years. Um, mm -hmm. The contract will dictate how good this trade is for the Raptors moving forward and like what they look like in the summer. But for the most part, I like it. And I missed your analysis on Ochai Abogji. I'm sorry. Uh, I would love to what? hear what you think. But so I, here's, I, what's, here's what's funny. Yeah. It may be true to form. You and I landed in a very similar place okay. on, on Kelly and very similar on the trade overall. Um, and it, it completely depends on if you wrote the Forbes uh, right up before I started talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, either, either It's either Sam Barney or S Barney. The, the nickname lives, lives along. But Ochai, I think, has significant upside defensively. And basically, you're waiting on the jumper. Yeah. Um, there was Douglas in chat was making the was saying that he saw a certain amount of comparison between he and Jimmy Butler. I'm not so sure I agree, but I like I like the optimism. Jimmy was also a, a really late bloomer as far as incredible kind of, shoulders. Also, that's yeah. that's the that's the only thing those two share right now. Just incredible. And they lost shoulders. a great pair of shoulders in Dennis Schroeder as well. But this yes. is why I tweeted that yesterday. I said that the Raptors need a looks maxer. And Ochai is like the looks maxer in the NBA. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I think there's a ton of defensive utility there. You're basically waiting on the three-point shot. The three-point shot is what determines what happens with his second contract and third contract if he's getting them. Yeah, and so he shot 30. I'm just looking at the number. He shot 35.5% last year in his rookie year yeah. and 32. What He shot well in college, though, if I yes, remember correctly. He, he was one of the best shooters in college at Kansas. Yeah, 100%. Right. Um, um, Here's something. Go ahead. Um, I know you said Jimmy Butler, and that's like something that's kind of like a little, a little much, uh, <laughs> considering what Jimmy Butler is. Um, but um, <laughs> leave uh, my guy Douglas alone, man. Let him dream. Yeah, okay, but um, <laughs> how about um, 
how about a guy who who did shoot well in college, who had a kind of like a rocky transition to the NBA? Um, I've kind of thrown this name out there with a few uh, with other guys, but um, uh, Aaron Neesmith. Um, we yeah, that's a good one. Aaron Neesmith, who who shot really well in his one year at Vanderbilt, yeah. um, was drafted was drafted <clears throat> at 13, 14, same as Oshai. You know um, Aaron Neesmith well. Yeah, I do. I do. So, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, had was very was struggling. You know, to transition into the NBA, his shot wasn't falling, and you know, kind of took a while to you know, you know, find himself. And then he got traded to Indiana, where he could actually play a little bit more free, a little bit more loose, um, without any expectation of playing for a playoff team or contender. And um, you know, it helped him a lot because last year, you know you saw like the strides in his game and then now this season he's he's not only for, shooting 46 percent from three but he's giving you all this stuff on defense rebounding the basketball he's you know attacking the basket and you know he's turned himself into a really nice player who can you know get a second third contract in this league so um yeah i think that's like the avenue for for, for a guy like ochad because you know he is like a he was like an older prospect. I know Neesmith was like a little bit younger, yeah. Um, coming out of college, so um, so yeah, I think maybe that's like the avenue for him yeah, for success. <laughs> that's that's uh, that, I, I like am, that, man. I, I like famously that. hate comparisons, hate them. <laughs> but that that one is actually such a strong comparison that it's passable to me. We have from. Just to like add context to some of the decision making here. No, I'm not trying to, you know, cape for the franchise, but Taco and Nacho Battle Channel says OG and Pascal too old for the timeline, but Kelly isn't. Come on, guys. And then Martin Co- Cook responds to that says, um, Olenek isn't a core player. He's just a good backup. The timeline thing is way overused. So OG wasn't seen as too old for the timeline. Mm-hmm. OG was going to leave the Raptors. Yeah. And yeah. so that's why he got traded. Pascal was seen as. Too old, not in the sense that he was too old, but in the sense that they didn't think he would improve past this spot where he's at right now. They didn't want to invest that money. And I'll say like the financial aspect of that is huge. The financial aspect is the biggest one. I think the Raptors would have been a play in slash playoff team this season had they brought Fred back with Scotty, Pascal, OG, Jakob. They played at a 47 win pace when they had that team at the end of the season 15 and 11 i believe they went of course fred getting stonewalled repeatedly by nikola vucevic on switches was not ideal in the plan but them's the breaks but if they did bring everybody back you would have had pascal on 38 million or 36 million you would have had fred on 40 million you would have had scotty on 10.1 og would have been looking at if he comes back north of 30 million as well you would have been like a big time taxpayer team for a team that just doesn't really have contender upside. And so the timeline, I think, does get overused. But Kelly won't infringe on the financials the same way that Pascal, Fred uh, would, given their end their age and expectation of improvement. And OG isn't part of the timeline conversation. The Raptors really liked OG. Yeah. Really liked him. But if a guy is going to leave in free agency, it behooves you to make sure that you get stuff back for him if he's the type of guy who can return RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. So that's kind of where that is. Some some context to it. So and, go ahead. I just wanted to say the deal that really confused me from the Raptors, and it's not really confused me because I guess from a a like clear cut financial perspective, it makes sense. But the Dimwitty for Schroeder thing is a bit confusing. I was gassed when I thought it was Dennis Smith Jr. as well. I, that would have made much more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. But it, it but it wasn't. No, yeah. his name just got thrown around for no reason at all. <laughs> um, Chisel asks, will there be a press conference with Masai or Bobby? Yes, yes, there will yes, be. There yeah. will be. Neither S or I will be there, I don't think, though. No, I, I, I've spent enough time downtown today. <laughs> well, also, like, not a, you're like an hour away. Yeah. Myself, via transit, I'm like two hours away from the the OVO center, which is where I had assumed it'll be held. And mm-hmm. I'm not doing four hours of transit um, to obviously, and I have to be able to do this podcast. So yada, yada, yada. Anyway. Um, yeah. I think it'll be shortly after the trade deadline wraps up. 
Yeah, it should. I yeah, I think three or three thirty, something like that. Yeah. Probably three thirty, if I had to yeah. guess. That's what it was like last year, if I remember. I was at last year's trade deadline, uh, if post thing. Was it Bobby that spoke post trade? Yeah. yeah. Or no, I wasn't there. Lewis was there. Oh. I was not there for that. Um, okay. Either way, man, the Dinwiddie Schroeder thing was strange to me because like. Schroeder, oh, wait, can I just to interact with chat here? Trevor Norlander says, seems the Dennis trade is just taking that club out of Darko's bag. <laughs> can you imagine? It's like, I don't want to play with you anymore. Or no, Masai is really saying that. Um, I don't know. I just I, think it's weird. I, I like, like, spe they've liked Dinwiddie in the past, right? They've, they have they have talked to him before, yes. So I, maybe that's part of it. Maybe they're like, hey, we'll do this trial run over the next three or four months and see if we want to re-sign you in the summer. Um, but at the same time, it's a cap space move to get off of Schroeder's contract next year. You get off of Thad, who's an expiring, and like you open up this massive amount of cap space, which I'm sure the Raptors will be act active in the summer to go and, and get those guys. But I just... That is the thing that confuses me. It's like, was the $12 million that Schroeder was making going to impact you so much in the summer that you had to do this move right now, whereas you could have probably done it in the summer for something similar? I just, I guess that's the thing that, that jumps out to me. Um, and if you really did want to get off some salary, I guess, you know, Chris Boucher, right? And I don't know. I guess well, maybe yeah. that that is another wrinkle that it could be is that like maybe they were having trouble with getting off of Chris. True. Maybe the Bruce Brown stuff isn't materializing the way they want to. Maybe all that kind of stuff isn't happening. And they saw like, oh, well, if there's if they want Dennis, then this can be a way that we shift, you know, some of the cap stuff. Yeah. I, won I wonder if that's how it's playing out, because. Um, there's no Bruce stuff that has materialized yet. So we're kind of just waiting on all that. And but Bruce and Bruce, like the teams that would go for Bruce are very are quickly gone. 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 Um, evaporating. Gone. Yes. Evaporating. Yes. Dissipating, whatever you want to call it. Um, no New York, no Lakers. Bucks doesn't really make sense anymore. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we have joining us the stats wizard. Keeks. Hello, Keeks. How Hello. you doing? Oh, hey, guys. How's what have, what, have, what have you thought about uh, the trade deadline so far? Let's get the the big ideas. Been uh, lots of lots of stuff going on. Lots of little things, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of second round picks. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, Raptors good so far, I think. I'm, I'm liking it. The <laughs> okay, Dennis, the Dennis Smith Junior got me for a second. I was like, wait, what? And then I, I was, know, uh, like looking up stats just to go back to the tweet, and it was gone. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny because I was we were reading it live and I kept saying I felt like a jackass trying to like relay information while also scrolling Twitter. And I saw that Woj had tweeted it out and I was like, good. And then it was gone. But then I saw that Blake had tweeted it out and I was like, OK, Blake has the scoop. Oh, yeah. But then Blake was just aggregating Woj. Damn so aggregator. Yeah. Always the yeah. aggregators. Yeah. <laughs> the GTJ got next. Blake Murphy. Two famous <laughs> aggregators. <laughs> Um, but what have you thought about like from the Raptors point of view? And I asked you to look up like fun little stats as it's, you know, it says fun fact enthusiast down there. Do you have anything um, exciting for us regarding the incoming Raptors players? Uh, I've, before I give you some fun facts, I heard the bit about Bruce Brown and still waiting to see what happens there. Mm -hmm. Guess no one's been on Instagram today. No, we saw it. We saw it. Okay. What? Oh, him posting the picture of him and the Raptors. Oh, what wait, a... look. This is very powerful. Hey. Look at this alpha energy right here. Wow. <laughs> um. Okay, but you know, him posting a picture. Does that mean he? No, stay? it means it means absolutely not. I mean, it. it... I don't, I don't want to say it means nothing, but it's hilarious that he would post it in the middle of everything, especially after. Yeah. Most yeah. of his suitors found other deals we even on top of that too is like it's not like he was particularly shy about saying that he could end up elsewhere like no. we, were make, we were making this joke he he was talking about playing for tom thibodeau openly yeah, also not okay that. i don't think he said tom thibodeau in that interview that new york post 
the, it did it did uh, assume the he said were yeah. very interestingly placed mm. you're right she is investigative in this stuff so she's right. i in the disinformation misinformation just bad information flow chart yes. i'm the misinformation <laughs> <laughs> aggregator it's a good wow question. aggregator shame on me the brackets were very interestingly placed. I don't actually think he said Thibodeau's name. Okay. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Like a Voldemort thing or like what's the deal there? Like they probably <laughs> asked him about like what his he'd bring to his next coach or like something or like asked him specifically about Thibodeau. But it's not like Bruce would have went out of his way to say, yeah, Tibbs would love me. Coco says, there you go, Samson. Life comes at you fast. I feel very, I'm feeling very humbled. I'm feeling very truly humbled under God right now. Thug life. My Aggregators, goodness. this is what you get. Yeah, I'm getting caught up in it. But but Keeks, what are your thoughts on the trade so far from the from the Raptors perspective? I was still asleep when the Olenek Abaji trade. I'm going to mess that up a billion times. Ochai Abaji. No, Abaji. Oh, so no, the, the G is not. The G it's is silent. Not I have it's a silent. clip for everybody. Oh, I, I have Abaji. a clip for everybody. So it's not Abaji. 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 I don't have to add my. I don't have to add my like Arab spin to it. He, no. Nope. No. Silent. We've had enough of your Arab spin. Here. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Ready? Ready? For all the people that don't know my name and how to say it, uh, it's pronounced Ochai Abaji. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. Abaji, he he yeah. did it for everybody. He came out and he said it. Respect. Respect. I, should have, I should have looked at the pronunciation guide. It's fine. It's fine. Abaji. Anyways, uh, good deal. I do enjoy the Calionic, Cali Olenic to Canada part. Thank you. Yes. Whatever seller is guaranteed. Yes. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's cheating. Um, no, Garfield, sorry. I was, re- I was reading someone. Yeah. Yeah, make no, sure you read out loud when you're on a podcast, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll mute one second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have some fun facts. Fantastic. Quick fun facts. Ninth Canadian to play for Toronto. Uh, as I think I saw a stat news tweet earlier, that we're three Canadians away from a full Canadian lineup, except they forgot about Chris Boucher. So mm. it's okay. So one. It's okay. We're two away. Uh, he is shooting 52.9% at home in Utah from three. From three. Not a lot of attempts, so it's kind of like a silly stat, but 52% from three, which is nice from home, at home, except I guess home is now Toronto. Mm-hmm. Mm, 3.9 assists in 42 games off the bench, which is the third most of any bench player with 40 mm-hmm. games off the bench. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah, he's yep. The passing is going to be so good with Darko and, and the offense that the Raptors run, Yep, even though the offense has been – questionable as of late not the system but the the players yeah he has 164 total assists which is the most of any center this season what any center really wait 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 is nikola Jokic? okay okay oh okay okay Okay. Okay. all right off the bench keeps losing you're you're cooking the books like the raptors (laughs) yeah farm (laughs) <laughs> the assist streak was fun, but it was fake. Not for the for the last seven games at least after Siakam was traded. It was fake. Uh he's won his last six games against the Raptors. Kelly nice. Linick has not lost in Toronto since April twenty nineteen. Well, he's about to start losing. He's his about world. to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he's come here for the last what five years now, he's won. He's won. He only maybe. lost on the road against the Rockers was in the bubble, which doesn't count. Or sorry, uh, in Tampa, doesn't count. Sure, but he's gonna lose a lot. Okay, maybe maybe the pizza party happens now that he's on the he's on the team now. I the do pizza... think there is a pizza party or two in their future. I think I had already we already made the shift. The pizza parties are now based on if Grady hits three threes in a row or not. 
All you don't, you don't, on. you don't wait That's for too these low Raptors. Bar. He's gonna hit a lot of threes. Well, this get used the, to a low bar, everybody. You don't wait standard. for the Raptors to feed you pizza. You change the rules and you go get your own pizza. This is the standard now. Like, come on, man. <laughs> You're yes. Right yes. Yeah. Bar, bar yeah. is on the ground. This is when Trey talks here. about this team, he when he says catch someone in the standings, he doesn't talk about upward ascension. He means <laughs> downward dissension. Down. We, yeah. We've changed. Ideals have changed around here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got to do a lot of digging for good stuff. It's hard. <laughs> Did you find fun any stats? Non- were easy. Did you find any non-fun stats about Olenek? No. About anybody. Can't, can't do my Canadian like that. There's probably a lot of non-fun stats about there, Spencer There is. I d- decided I wasn't going to look up any fun stats about Dinwiddie. Nice. The only one I have about him is, I mean, my take on the whole deal is that they're just freeing up cap space. Yep. Mm-hmm. They don't have, he's UFA. They don't have to pay. Not yep. that Dennis's money was like a ton, but it gets rid of, I think that was UFA this year. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Thad was expiring. It's you're freeing up uh, either twelve point five or thirteen million with Dennis yeah, for next season. With Dennis, yeah, That's which which might whatever. mean that they can spend that money on Gary if they so choose. It also means that they could maybe go hunting for if they decide to like shake up a front court situation. They could. It also means they can be more flexible about the Bruce Brown spot if that doesn't shake out, or the yeah. Chris Boucher spot. It also means that maybe Malik Monk can be drawn from sacramento i don't know <laughs> that's that's wishful thing i'm wish casting currently but what yeah. about what about clax young nick young nick uh i don't expect it to happen just because i think I that they're keeping it, kelly but... and i yeah. think they're keeping yuck and yeah. also i like claxton a lot i've actually come around i've done the horseshoe where mm-hmm. i'm actually more i think that Jakob is a better player for like quickly and scotty to play yeah, agree. you then claxton yeah. would be i agree i agree with that just we agree actually the recap today was a lot about that it was like look how important Jakob is yeah he's very so important. yeah developmentally That's, them screens I remember, baby i remember when jv was kind of popping off for the raptors when I was working at Foot Locker and we talk about the Raptors playoff games after they would happen and people would just like this was analysis in the in the like mid 2010s was like, well, Jonas Valanciunas shoots a better percentage from the floor than Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. Just have him shoot the ball more. Mm-hmm. And like you could do. I hope that there's somebody oh. carrying that torch. That's like Jakob shoots the highest percentage in the league. They should just have him shoot as much as like Joel Embiid does, so that they <laughs> score more. Oh, I would love that. That'd be funny. Also, yeah. somebody commented that since Malachi got traded from New York to Detroit, he's getting closer to Toronto, and I love that spin on it. And I think that's very funny. Just as an aside, Geeks, any more yes. fun stats? Okay, some Agbaji fun stats. So I don't, unfortunately, watch a lot of jazz. You're not. Like, are, are we talking about I'm like not, Keenan, like you know, going to contemporary jazz clubs, or are we talking about the Utah Jazz? The, the Utah Jazz. Thank you. Where's the thumbs down button from that show? Uh, but from the stuff I did watch, obviously very three and D. I guess they didn't. Are they selling low on him? I'm not sure. But he's had a down <sighs> offensive year, from what I could find from mm-hmm. my fun fun facts. Thirty-five point five percent from three last season on three point nine attempts. This season it's thirty-three point one. He's only taking like two point eight, I think, like his one whole last three. The first like thirty games of the season this year played like twenty one minutes, six shots, pretty mostly off the bench. Uh, thirty-seven percent from three. Since he la- since the Jazz came back and won against the Raptors on that. Fun day before Christmas. Nice. Seventeen point nine minutes, so just eighteen minutes off the bench. He is shooting twenty two percent from three. Yeesh. How many That's attempts? Really How many attempts per game? Uh, three point four. Not three in general, but three point four. Google attempts. Oh, that's kind of tough. Uh, Woj lower. says Woj says on ESPN that the Hawks and Raptors are still g- d- discussing Dejounte Murray and Bruce Brown deals, respectively. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was gonna say 
DeJounte is not coming to Toronto. No, he no. is not. Oh, no, because... no. Sorry. Yeah, he worded yeah, yeah. that terribly. Yeah. He yeah. Uh... He's been wording a lot of stuff terribly today. <laughs> Woj, you've been tricking poor secondary market podcasters <laughs> into saying things that aren't true, into becoming vehicles for misinformation, and I don't like it. Um, I think what happens that... when you're an aggregator? <laughs> yeah. Taco and Nacho that... Battle Channel says, I love when Samson laughs like Matthew McConaughey and Days and Confused. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Wait, how does he la- how does he laugh in that? I haven't seen that since I it's was. It's like a it's kid. like a very subtle, like I don't yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I this, this is, is this is something, something I talked about. about. Whoa, Whoa, I'm getting feedback, feedback from, from somebody. somebody. What, what the hell, hell is going, going on, on, man? This is a trip. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, okay somebody, somebody has, has to, to mute. mute. It, it, wait, wait. Keith, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet it's Keith. Okay. okay. Wait. wait. Somebody, somebody, okay, okay, somebody, somebody mute, mute, please, please for the love of God. Okay. Okay. It's not us. So S unmute. Baker unmute. Oh wait, mute. Okay. Keith, I think you have to mute. <laughs> no, no, I hate, I hate it. it. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god. Wait. Wait. What is going on? Okay. Okay. You get it. It was geeks. Okay, yeah. It's geeks. Holy <laughs> moly. Okay. Okay. I thought it was me. <laughs> Davion Mitchell uh, and Kevin Herter for like I don't know. I'm just thinking of random things. Um uh, sure. I was gonna say like maybe the Ochai trade. They're probably just opening more minutes for like the there are a lot of their picks from last from this past draft like Hendrix. I think Sense of Ball is gonna play a little bit more. I'm back. Um, Sorry guys, we've done it. That's good. So I think Bro. those, I think the Fontecchio and the and the, the Ochai <clears throat> trades is just opening minutes for guys like Bryce and uh, for Hendrix to just play a little bit more. Um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised because like what are the Jazz? I mean the Jazz are not bad. Like they're pretty good. And Have fun. you take you take Simone out. You take uh hey, yes, Memento. You're right. It, we talked about the Jalen Rose bat the other day. Um, yeah, you take Fontecchio out, you take Kelly O out. That's like that's like about 35 minutes from your front court right there, maybe more. Yeah. Like, how are you feeling that? That's tough. I mean, Hendrix is like basically a the fours, so like a like basically is like six ten. Like they kind of drafted him in hopes of him being like that will stretch for like small ball five because of mm-hmm. what he can do on offense. Yeah. And, you know, Bryce Sensabaugh can kind of like fill. I know he's like smaller on for a wing, but like I think he can maybe step in in that wing spot and just, you know, kind of just provide that scoring punch that he did in college. So um, I think those two will probably just step in and get more minutes. It'll probably take some time for them to get acclimated because, you know, they haven't really played that much NBA basketball. It's a lot of just probably G League stuff for them or, like, just a lot of, like, practice. So um, I think maybe it's just, like, you're just opening more minutes for, like, guys like Keontae and, like, their rookies and, like, second-year guys along with, like, Laurie and Walker Kessler to, like, just play a little bit more. What this says to me is that the Jazz are looking to have their guards and forwards kind of expand their game, and they're going to move everybody up like a position as far as the front court goes. And because they did have a really strong front court, but not, you know, an all-star level front court, they're trying to, you know, and they probably see all-star impact or like really high level impact for some of their younger guards, like Sexton, like Keontae, like hopefully taking a swing on Bryce and stuff like that. They're going to try and grow it that way. Also, Coco says, Samson, he's a creep in that. I deny all creep comparisons across the board. It's just because I speak with the draw. I deny all of the Matthew McConaughey comps. Keeks, you had something to say. I'm just going to laugh a little bit and then keep going. Uh, does <laughs> Kessler, Walker Kessler has been coming off the bench for them this year, right? Yeah, uh, well, he start? was. I don't think he will be anymore. He's yeah. not. He's not anymore. He's going to start. Mm-hmm. I, miss, that's, I guess that's my whole take on the Jazz. And they're yeah. trying to get their younger guys. Oh, well, they still have John Collins, too, right? So. Oh, yeah, they do. I forgot. Yeah. Because yeah. I think they started. Yeah. Dennis Smith Jr. is not on the team. No. So, just letting you know. Uh, sorry. No. Uh, Solovellan. Yeah. 
I let people know. I corrected the misinformation. <laughs> I was doing it live, everybody. I I I reject these these misinformation and disinformation <laughs> clubs. Adrian Wojnarowski will never hold me down like the Raptors press releases do. I just don't uh, listen to Sham's tweets either. I I would never. Speaking of the I saw, deadline, I saw. Wait, wait, go ahead, Baker. Speaking of the deadline, though, are there any moves that you guys like are like the biggest fans of, like in terms of like other teams? I think the Gordon one is kind of sick. Because mm-hmm. Gordon, like, on any given game, can give you like that third star impact, yeah. and if he's and healthy, yeah. if he's healthy, and OKC doesn't really have to risk anything or shake up their team too much to have like a swing at that attempt. I've yeah. been wondering why Gordon, no team has kind of like taken that chance on him over the past couple of years, and I'm glad to see one team finally did because I think it makes a lot of sense. He, we've seen even as like Raptors fans, we've seen very impressive games where he's kind of like, he stepped on the court and you're like, oh yeah, this is one of the best players out here. So it's just about health. But OKC kind of like taking a swing on that is pretty good. Taco and Nacho Battle Channel says, a lie makes it halfway around the country before the truth gets its trousers on. Abe Lincoln. Yeah. And someone who is speaking like Abe Lincoln um, or, or Winston Churchill, you know, Somebody of old coming over the sound of the radio was Trevon on his AirPods. He sounded like he was calling in from the battle entrapments in Did he? World War II. It was that, so is that funny, what AirPods man. sound like? Is that what AirPods sound like? <laughs> that his did. I was saying he got him off Wish.com. He's like, we gotta I get come, him. We gotta get him some headphones then. I come to you now <laughs> in a moment of ultimate leverage. <laughs> yeah. That was really that was really good. I can't lie. That um was great. My favorite trade is either the Buddy trade or the Knicks adding Boyan and Burks. Um, Ooh, that's a good one. Which is a good one. Yeah, I, I just think like Boyan has made big shots in playoff games and the Knicks will need someone off the bench to hit big shots in playoff games. Burks is a guy who like can light up for like 10 points, 15 points on any given night. Uh, and like that's pretty good to have off your bench too. I, I don't know, man. I think the Knicks are just like good. Like the and and yeah. Samson, you share the sentiment from with me. It's like when teams I didn't just share go that for sentiment it. with you. <laughs> if I go. Um, when when teams like go for it, you know, when teams are like, hell yeah, we're gonna go for everything that we got this year. Um, and no, I don't think that means less playing time for Precious because uh, to Coco's question, because you know they still have Randall out for a really long time, apparently over this next three or four weeks. Uh, OG is still dealing with battling with injuries and whatnot. Um, And who knows when Mitchell Robinson will come back. So Precious is still going to get a lot of run. I feel, I just think the Knicks, like the Knicks 10 man rotation is so good now compared to what it was like even two months ago. Also as a quick interjection, Alec Burks has a 34, 33, 27, 25, 24, 21 point performances this season. Yeah, like he he in his bag is like he can get one of those. Yeah, um, he, he's he's just been a quality player for a long time. I quite like him. The Knicks the Gaff- is definitely my fave too of yeah. all the ones that they did. Also, Sydney the Gafford trade picks. rocks. Yeah, Gafford's was, good too. Oh my god, don't remind me. Uh, oh yeah, Baker, you're Wizards. You're the uh, you're the the Raptors Republic Wizards delegate. Let us know how you feel about the Gafford trade. I was gonna Wizards. tell you. I was gonna tell you that uh, the Mavs trades are probably my favorite. Like the P- getting PJ Washington and getting Daniel Gafford is two moves that I really, really like. <laughs> um, trading da- like when I saw the the Gafford news, it kind of like I kind of just like I I, I was co- I was coping a little bit. I was a little angry, but uh, you know. For 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 lively insurance, this is probably like really really good for for yeah. for Matt, for the Mavs, um, and upgrading Grant Williams to PJ Washington that's substantial. Um, so now like you're surround, you have like a floor of, I mean a lineup now with lively not playing as much, but you have Luca, Kyrie, PJ Washington, Hardaway, and Gafford. So that's like a really, really strong five. And then if Lively comes back, you know, Dwight Powell, the Dwight Powell backup five minutes aren't going to be, aren't going to be as much as a coin flip anymore. 
because now Daniel Gafford can step in and really just give you as much as what Derek Lively was giving you when he was like healthy. So definitely love the match. Powell slander is not allowed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You really you are Canada pilled, hey? Forget he's Canadian. (laughs) Um, but I think I think Gafford can be better than Lively, to be quite honest with you. And I Mm -hmm. think he the way he plays offense, I think really is a benefit to Luca and Kyrie. And then defensively, while he doesn't really shore up the boards, I think he's always there's always been like a strong correlation in Daniel's like mobility and like his pop at the rim. There's always been a correlation between him being on the court and other teams just missing more shots, including at the rim as well. So super big deal. He is he's been one of my favorite like I loved I loved him when he was on Chicago and I wanted the Raptors to kind of like take a swing at him. But that just hasn't necessarily been the case. And now he is on the uh, now he's on the the maps. Uh, Doug McDermott just got traded to the Pacers. The Pacers. Are so the Buddy Healed situation is now all sewn up. And by the way, Pascal and Doug McDermott will look good together. And also, S, you weren't here for this, but I was kind of like poking fun at you earlier, saying that I got the the better end of the Buddy information because we had that disagreement about Buddy. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but that was when Trey and Kai were here. So I have to make the joke now that you're there. Um, <laughs> now that you're here. That makes a lot of sense. They get bigger. They don't. Nemhard will get more minutes, and their mm-hmm. defense will be better. They also have that shooting. Uh, Pascal, Miles. I don't know if they'll end up running a lot of like delay action or anything like that. So we'll- the Atlanta Hawks are keeping guard Dejounte Murray. Breaking news, folks. All right, that's fine, right, guys. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Appreciate appreciate y'all letting me on. See you, Baker. Let it, dude. Yeah. Later, Gator. Um, Pacers are trading Marcus Morris with back to the Spurs for McDermott. Really? Get him. I. That's kind of what I was expecting to happen with um, with Dinwiddie. I thought he would go somewhere, but maybe he's yeah. more of a buyout candidate than than something else, I suppose. But yeah, them's the breaks. So if if maybe you guys would have more clarification because I forget how buyouts work. If let's say the Raptors decide to buy out Dinwiddie, yes, is it does it have to get spread across three years or is it can it be a longer amount of time? It, it can it can be um, it can differ depending on the terms they so, agree on. So they can agree you don't, on what you, don't, I, you, right. you yeah. don't have to get bought out your full contract. The player can agree to a lower amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, Daniel Hackett was in here earlier giving the buyout info. So for teams that want to be on the buyout market, for example, a team that is a tax-paying team can't get somebody on the buyout market who cost, who was bought out of a contract that was more than the mid-level exception. Yeah. Right. So there's stuff, which is why... The 76ers are like kind of like shaking and moving reportedly for Kyle Lowry. So they have to be like not a tax team to be able to do that. I'm pretty sure. Of so, the top teams, they're, I'm pretty sure they're the only ones that can technically sign Kyle off the buyout market. That makes sense. Um, Wedgie, or sorry, Thomas Aitken says, yeah, I do not get Pacers losing Buddy. He has been money. I talked about this earlier, but based on what I know, the Pacers and, the, and Buddy are like $10 million <laughs> apart on expected salary for this upcoming free agency. So Buddy wasn't going to be a pacer. They think he's a player of some, you know, he has value of some consequence. So they're moving off of Buddy while they can still get something for him. And obviously replacing a lot of what his value is and a lot of his impact on the team with Doug McDermott. And that means that they have an avenue, in my opinion, to better defense, which they have had since Pascal arrived. And then on top of that, you know, Nembhard steps in as a point of attack defender. He's been getting healthier. He's looked great. More, more of those buddy minutes can go to Nembhard. They can continue running through like the gamut of their million different forwards slash, you know, wings, whatever that looks like with like Obi Toppin and Jalen Smith and like Doug McDermott and all that kind of stuff. So I think this makes sense for the Pacers. However, I will hmm. kowtow to whatever Caitlin Cooper thinks when she eventually talks about that kind of stuff. The Bucks are trading Robin Lopez to the Sacramento Kings. Lopez is expected to be waived. 
Okay. Exciting stuff. Robin Lopez. Very. Okay. One of the brothers is gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that means they're opening up a roster spot for someone. Mm. This just in two. After being waived, Robin Lopez will become a mascot at Disneyland for his <laughs> full time job. Hell yeah. Honestly, he should, you know. Can you imagine a seven foot two mascot? It'd be incredible. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Beat them up. That's the question. Yeah. Um, I don't think Bruce gets traded. We got nine minutes. Yeah, I don't think he is. Can be announced after. No, I don't. I don't think they do anything else. I think that was it for the Raptors. So, egg on this guy's face. Yeah, you remember? <laughs> Last night. Yeah. I said that I expected it to be Bruce and Chris. Yeah. However, at the trade deadline live show, I came out. And I said, Dennis Schroeder. And everyone said, no. <laughs> and I said, I said, why not? Why can't that happen? I think it might. And guess what? So um, some valor saved for me. But uh, apologies to everybody who'd been listening over time and heard me say I expected Bruce Brown and Chris Boucher gone. Because obviously neither of those things happened. Yeah. Well, I guess smoke. there's still. Pardon me? There was too much smoke. Not oh, to I th- you. I, I thought you said too much folk. And I was like, yeah, maybe a little bit. It's been almost <laughs> three hours. Um, You've been yeah. grinding, man. Good for you. Three hours is tough. That's a bro. lot of talking. I feel like, yeah, I feel like a Twitch streamer, which I don't like because there's like the divide, right? It's like a Twitch streamer is somebody who's like just talking for hours and like will eat on stream and will be like, okay, hey guys, I got to take a bathroom break and we'll like fuck off. But I was like, I feel like. I'm doing a podcast, but I still like feel like a professional journalist as long as I'm not like doing the hallmarks of Twitch streaming, which is like being like eating on stream, doing like a marathon stream. <laughs> stuff. I still feel like a journalist, but we're cut. I feel like the line is getting like fuzzy. I don't know. There's lots of aggregation going on here. So, oh my god, I don't know if that, <laughs> that counts. No. Um, here's a fun question. Somebody asked it however long ago. They said, who do you think misses Dennis the most? Darko, Will, or Blake? Guys. Oh, that's Darko a good question. Darko was not... I, I, when he came out to close the game last night, that was my first hint of him getting traded. Really? Oh, you mean, you mean... Wait, well... Wait, didn't Grady not close the game and Dennis closed the no, game? No, Dennis, yeah, Dennis closed. I came out, he came back out to close the game. Oh, like he oh. He wasn't no. on the floor and then oh, so Darko wait, subbed it, him back in. If so I think, can if I can yeah. aggregate your thoughts real quick here, it no. seems to me like you're saying that the Raptors played their best unit to win a game, and you were thinking that the front office is like, maybe we don't do that. We're gonna make sure you can't play that unit, Mr. Coach. Did I aggregate properly? No. Oh, okay. Well, no, you win some, you lose some. They were displaying their best, not their best assets, or their most tradable assets. You think Dennis getting three minutes at the end of a game is going to swing somebody on him? No, but it was like a, a farewell gesture, you know? And, oh. uh, <laughs> but I mean, maybe. That was, that last, like, what? The fourth quarter was when they actually tried. Last night they did. They did try. They did try. Yeah, that was they, that was and the by trying, they were effort. like, they're like, let's put Jakob into the game because he's yes. obviously one of the best players on the team. Let's put him in there if we want to win minutes, which was not what they did against Oklahoma City. No. Hmm. We're six minutes away. Yeah. Any I'm, predictions? I'm kind of waiting. I don't. I don't know who would trade for Bruce Brown. Like, I don't know. Is Pat Connaughton an uh, uh, an expiring salary? I don't know. And if <laughs> I if I knew that. if I knew Pat Connaughton's contract situation off the dome, I would not feel I would not feel good to about avoid. myself. Oh. Uh, Raptors are planning to waive Spencer Dinwiddie. See, I didn't have to do notes for a reason. Oh, there you go. There we go. To avoid a one point through five million dollar upcoming bo- contract bonus for games played, the Raptors are planning to waive Spencer Dinwiddie. Major. There we go. It is kind of funny though, because they're trying not to pay that one point five million. They pay the one point five million out, but it gets like filtered through Bitcoin or whatever, and then he gets like four hundred thousand oh dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
GPWW with a great Freudian slip saying waving density instead of Dinwiddie is contract density, let's say. So yeah, been waved. That was my initial read of the trade. So I feel good about yes. myself now. Um, I didn't think he would get any minutes. So that turned out to be true. It is kind of funny because Nets Daily tweeted that they were hearing that Spencer Dinwiddie was going to be bought out. And then Spencer was sassy on Twitter and said, no, I'm not going. That's not going to happen. And then he got traded. So technically the Nets didn't buy him out or wave him, what? but the Raptors did. So I guess that's worth noting as well. No, the, sorry. I, I'm I'm shocked because the Sixers just traded Jaden Springer, Springer for a second round pick. Why didn't we give the second? Well, we I know, know, man. We have, wait, I guess, is it a second round pick this year? It doesn't say when. Mm. If it's like a 2025, I'm kind of like, why not? Because I really like Jaden Springer. He's a very interesting Come guard. Come on. He is a very interesting guard. He, and that's a good get for the Celtics. Like, that's a that's a nice yep. little swing. Damn. <sighs> no, it hmm. doesn't. BCG says, are we back to having no backup point guard, LOL? Ah. Uh... I it guess. feels like there might be another move here coming because the Bucks Javon just Javon Freeman Liberty maybe yeah. is yeah maybe it's his time to shine. Raptors have two roster spots open now. Bucks have two roster spots open now. The Sixers now have I think two or three roster spots open. This is cruel that Tony Snell can't even get, get it. Yeah. Had to get signed before all this stuff opened up. I know, but. Honestly, maybe if he gets signed now, then he could sign like a 10-day whatever and then still like a 10-day next season and then qualify for like the 10-year. Maybe. 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 I don't know. Mo Gee, come on down. Nesta. That's an interesting one. He I like Mo a lot at at Summer League. And obviously the 905 stuff, that that whole team has not been very good, but I think JFL is more compelling, I suppose. Sir Sizzle says it's time for JFL to shine. And Memento also mentioned that, um, that of course, stuff can be announced after 3 p.m. That's true. Yeah. But I I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, they usually like to get them in. Um, man, I need one more move, man. I need the Raptors to do one more thing. Just, just give me something else. Uh, ND. Oh, I'm kidding. Okay. ND said, did y'all see the space when someone got into an accident talking about Dinwiddie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like the guys are talking about Dinwiddie, then you hear like this. And everybody was okay, so I don't feel bad laughing about it. But you're like this. <laughs> and then the guy's like, they're like, hey, are you okay? Yep. Like guys, I got to head out. Yeah. A guy crashed yeah. his car on the Twitter spaces. Yeah. And then he he was like, guys, I got to head out. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> how how would you feel, man? Just that's gonna there? happen to Key one day. Oh, one hundred percent, it's gonna happen to Keenan one day. Someone Just needs to block Twitter Spaces from. Keenan. Coco says Samson in Spaces never. I just can't do it. You've done it a couple times. I did it once for Trey because Trey is my dear, sweet, beloved boy. <laughs> but it was a Raptors Republic space, not like a. That's true. And I am a Toronto man. Raptors breaking news. The Toronto Raptors are keeping Bruce Brown Jr. Sources tell ESPN. Okay, so that's like backup. I he guess posted his picture in a jersey. <laughs> oh my god! Don't read too much into that. How? The, do you know what players get up to on social media? You like <laughs> literally Spencer Dinwiddie yesterday said, "LOL, I'm not getting bought out. I'm not getting waived." You can't trust these guys. Dennis but he Smith didn't say Jr. He wasn't going to get traded. Dennis Smith Jr. But but you understand what I'm saying, and like Dennis yes, Smith yes, Jr. Yes. got involved, like he saw Woj's tweet and was like, what "What's fuck? happening? Yeah. These guys don't really know." Um, but yeah, I guess this is kind of funny. Um, is- C4C says he paid for the number. I guess yeah, a better investment than he initially thought, purchasing uh, the number from Jante Porter. Yeah, and Coco says, if I was a player, I would post random things to mess with people watching my socials. Uh, OG and Anobi, that is your spirit animal, yes. it seems. OG, very funny online poster. Well. Commenter. Yep. Certainly. Celtics trading Banton to the Blazers. What? Oh, I don't know. 
Okay, sure. That's he's just a Rexdale kid, just like me, man. Wait, was that from Shams or from Woj? Woj. Woj. Mm. Heavily protected second. Okay, sure. Sounds good. How funny was that? That like at the press conference for Darko's introduction, no player who attended it is left on the roster. None Zero. whatsoever. Yeah. Isn't that like extremely funny? It's because I think that's extremely funny. And the sucks, fact that though, like because like because Christian would have probably been on the team had the situation not yes transpired. Christian but... Christian definitely had he his talent. Yeah. He has the juice for not only his first contract. He had second contract juice certainly. I imagine um, if he gets healthy, which the there's Raptors a possibility are... that he does. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If he gets healthy, the Raptors are in. Oh yeah. But um, man, you know what's funny? There was so much talk about the Bulls (laughs) and just nothing. Like not even Andre Drummond is getting moved. The Bulls are so boring, man. The Bulls Bulls are so lost to the Raptors and did nothing at the deadline. I. They're like yeah. The Bulls are such a boring team. From like team building point of view from yeah. a vibe actually that well that's not necessarily true they play decent basketball on court actually they like billy donovan has them running some stuff and, and uh kobe white popping off has been really fun yeah but that julian phillips guy is kind of cool too i like him it's cool blocks cool shots um wanted to ask you guys do you think the raptors are now more or less likely to be a playing team Mm. I guess well, t- technically more. Technically more. Technically the team more. the team is better than it was. Yeah, I agree. Well, because yeah. I think I think Kelly Olenek is a better player than Dennis Shooter, basically. <clears throat> Otto wasn't yes. playing, Kira Lewis wasn't playing, Spencer Dinwiddie won't be playing. Maybe Ochai plays. Ochai right? will Ochai play. Ochai will play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm fucking sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tom M says, are they going to let Trent walk or try to resign? I actually think probably around 15 million. They might agree on something 15 million per they have more cap space now opened up. So we will see. Um, yeah. but do I think they end up in the play and probably not, but I wouldn't be super surprised because, you know, if the team fortifies and rallies around, okay, we're a team now, everybody's here. You're here. I would like to see this team play better defense. It has been disheartening to watch them compete on that end certainly and i hope you know calcified under new meaning and a new team guys can find a little bit more compete level on that end Mm -hmm. joseph to the pacers oh nice that Uh, is didn't he play for the pacers once right he did he doesn't he doesn't move the needle a lick no not at all he's he's turbo washed but um okay sounds good uh Hmm. the raptors in the last 15 games, have the worst defensive rating in the NBA. <laughs> like 30. Well, they've they've given up 130 plus points, like in what four of their last five franchise, games or something. Yeah, franchise record eight games this season, or franchise worst, I guess. But the so, worst defensive rating of any yeah. team. So, in the way that you've shown growth by not prefacing that stat by saying "fun fact," I hope that the Raptors show growth as a defense. <sighs> That is my. I have, I have a, an Abaji fun fact then because this one's kind of sad a little bit. Mm. Oh god, it's a little sad. Sixty-one and a half percent on corner threes through the first thirty games. Good. Which is. That's yeah, stel- very good. Yeah. Stel- very good. Fourteen point eight percent since. How uh, how many shots? Uh, the same amount. One point three attempts from the corner. Total. What are the total amount of shots? If you can. wait, if he's played thirty, that's like that's like a fifteen shot sample, like f- between fifteen to twenty. Yeah, shots it's not sample. a lot. Okay, but he took them. I think it would have been cool if you had just mentioned the first thirty games. That would have been super <laughs> sick and awesome if you had done. <laughs> and forgot about the rest. Yes, Neil B says these facts are so fun. That's correct, Neil B. All the fun facts. All right. Well, it's like three oh five. Yeah. Bruce's thing. I don't think Chris Boucher is going to be the after buzzer um, trade. 
No. Raptors, that feel just, like... Raptors just made uh, the Olenek and the Olenek, Abaji yeah. trade official. Oh, the tweet came through? Mm-hmm. Let, let me read the, the Raps PR tweet. Raptors acquire Olenek and Abaji from Jazz. The Toronto Raptors announced Thursday that they have acquired forward center Kelly Olenek and guard Ochai Abaji from the Utah Jazz in exchange for Keir Lewis Jr., forward Otto Porter Jr., and a 20, 2024 first-round pick. A native of Toronto, Olenek played three collegiate seasons at Gonzaga, met a very a teenage with Samson Folk, and will not remember him when Samson Folk brings that up to Kelly Olenek, and was picked 13th overall by Dallas in the 2013 NBA draft. He owns career averages of 10.2 points, 5.2 rebounds, 2.4 assists, and 22.5 minutes in 728 contests with Boston, Miami, Houston, Detroit, and Utah. On the international stage, yada, yada, yada. Abaji, 6'5", 215 pounds, handsome as hell, is averaging 5.4 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 19.7 minutes in 51 games, 10 starts this season. He's shooting 4.426% from the field and has scored in double figures eight times. Abaji scored a season-high 21 points on 7 of 14, shooting 5 of 10 from 3, December 6th at Dallas. A native of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Abaji was acquired by Utah after he was picked 14th overall by Cleveland in the 2022 NBA draft. That is all the information I will give. As C4C says, Slim Duck survives. The championship roster is still intact. Final nice. thoughts on the trade deadline before we get out of here. S, I'll let you go first. Okay, so the the Schroeder trade makes more sense now that Dinwiddie is waived. Uh, purely a cap space move. They're not worrying about, you know, incorporating. Saving cash. money. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, what's it called? The Dan LaRue and Nate Duncan thing. You know, the, the video. Of Danny them LaRue. Danny, it's yeah, also yeah. The, the David Roth tweet as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah Basically, yeah. What, what we tell Nabil three times a day. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um but no it's good I, I again i am uh very much so team fan of the kelly olenic trade the raptors were not going to make uh you know four pick selections this year in the 2024 draft potentially three so getting olenic is good getting ochai who's like an intriguing prospect also good i'm happy sounds good to me works for me i it, it would have been cool to see bruce go but at the same time like like I have mentioned, there is some flexibility there this summer to potentially move them. So, yeah. Memento AO says it's crazy how they just wave millions of dollars like that. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, man. Yeah, I'm for just real. Like, I see stuff like this. You see the big stuff moving. You see like weapons manufacturers, and you wonder like how much is falling off the back of the truck here. <gasps> That's what I wonder about. Yeah, for real. I'm always thinking about that. That's why I always hang around the back of trucks. Which actually, when I was uh, working, I think I was 23 or maybe 21, actually, when I was doing snow clearing. You mean I right back- now? I had a backpack blower. I won't address that, Keeks. I had a backpack blower and I was doing a parking lot and I was actually behind the back of a truck and they hit me and I fell. I got hit by the car and I fell onto the backpack blower. It hurt my back and I was like a turtle on my back. It was terrible. So, as much <laughs> as it might seem ideal to hang around the back of a truck to see if any money falls off it's actually kind of a hazard to hang around the back of vehicles as somebody who's been hit by one good to know yeah damn well Just i hope the notes that, um geeks thoughts that on the trade deadline? that is not a fun fact that's more of a an anecdote tangent coco says did i get workers compensation absolutely not no although if they would convert Jonte to a full contract. So I don't think they will because it means they can offer him more money in the summer, which I know is what was said about Jeff Doughton and that didn't end up happening. But I actually think that's probably something that does happen with Jonte. He says a two way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's kind of, but what are your thoughts on the the trade deadline overall Keeks? Uh, And have you ever been hit by a vehicle? I have actually been hit by a vehicle before. Really? Yes. What? S, have you been hit by a vehicle? Are we like three for three? I have. I've had a toe run. I've. I've had a car run over my toe. Doesn't really count. Okay, Keeks, we need your story. It's not that. Not not as crazy as yours. Apparently, it wasn't a turtle. Uh, walking to school, someone decided to not stop at the stop sign. Oh my god! But it was how old? Were, it was how like old were you? Super like high school. High super school. Super slow. 
a hit, but so I was fine, thankfully. But yeah. Jesus. What did it have you was that the hardest you've ever been hit in your life? By anything? Yeah. What did it feel like for you? What did it feel like? I felt like I got hit by a car. <laughs> But no, but I'm like, but not every, I understand, I understand what you mean by that. But like, we have to try and relate to other people, you know? But it's an expression that's used for a very specific reason. But nobody because... understands. You know, Till the cows car... come home is an expression I've heard people use and they don't even own cows. This is a very Saskatchewan expression, I guess, because I don't think anyone uses that. that Till the cows thing. come home? No, I've, I've heard that. No, I've that heard was, it. That was really it's a not, thing when I was. Not a lot. When I was driving around New Zealand, um, all the cows who stayed in pastures there and like <laughs> sheep, they were looking out above, like at mountains and stuff all the time and looking out at like beaches and everything like that. And then I would think about the cows in Saskatchewan and how they just looked at nothing. Tim Waring says, Weird, I once hit a girl on her way to school. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so much, man. Oh, God, that's great. That's bad. Uh, but good deadline, I think, for the Rockers. I know sure. not what we expected. Yeah. But I'm not mad about any of the trades. I love the the trade with Utah, so. And the waving of Spencer Dinwiddie. Can we just take in that Messiah Jury and Danny Ainge made a trade together? Yeah. They got on the phone, called each other. Talked. Talked, conversed, and then came to a conclusion. Maybe it was Bobby. Maybe it wasn't Messiah. Yeah, Maybe. Maybe. I would love to know who pulls the trigger on what, but whatever. It's another story for another day. I can tell you who pulls the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like, yeah, it's 312. You guys want to get out of here? You definitely want to get out of here. You've he been at it. Talking. You've I been at it for three. Here, yeah. <laughs> you've been at it for three hours. So let's let's rock and roll. Let's go. Oh yeah. Just like bah. Anyway, the people in chat, make sure you like the video on your way out. It helps suggest it to people who if they want to listen to this retroactively, God speed. Um, but also make sure you su subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you feel like it, subscribe to RaptorsRepub.com. It's how we stay alive. As apparently TSN and Bell are closing stuff down. Yahoo Sports has shuttered its doors. Sports Illustrated is no, no longer anything anymore. And Raptors Republic somehow keeps trucking along, providing the Raptors media space with so much of its talent currently and in the past. And this is how we stay alive, a subscription model on the website. If you have the means you'd like to support, God bless you. Keeks, thank you so very much for the time. S, thank you so very much for the time. Kai, Trey, Baker, everybody who hopped in. Listeners, thank you for hopping in with us. And whether you got into this in the morning or at night, probably in the afternoon, to be quite honest. Have a blessed day and goodbye. <laughs>